Georgia for the first time ever. Very pleasant weather here in the Peach State. Kick off at temperature time is 61 degrees, a relative humidity 75% of the wind out of the south at eight miles per hour. And now here come the Orangemen of Syracuse with a seven and four record. Their sixth winning season in seven years. And their fourth bowl appearance in the last five years. Dick McPherson in his ninth year. He's returned Syracuse football to the forefront of the national football scene. Georgia doesn't have a long ways to come as they're about an hour away from Athens. They'll be making their second appearance in the Peach Bowl, and here they come. The 10th bowl appearance in the 80s. The only team, the SEC, to accomplish that feat. And Ray Goff, their rookie coach, only 34 years old, a native of Georgia, and he's directed the Dogs to a 6-5 and five record. Hi, everybody. I'm Gary Bender. After 25 years, there was a change in Athens, Georgia. Ben Steele stepped down as head football coach, and a guy who was an assistant for eight years, Ray Goff, has taken over. He wants to win today because he wants to avoid their first non-winning season since 1979. Nick McPherson, on the other hand, this is his ninth year, and he's bringing the Orangemen to a third straight bowl appearance. That's the school record. Third straight time they're going to meet a team from the SEC, and he says, we want this bad. We want to go eight and four. With me is Dick Vermeil, and Dick, I tell you, this is the best passing team in the history of Syracuse. Well, quarterback pass offense this year, the offense quarterback by Bill Sharp set a new school record of averaging over 241 yards a game. Now, they did this by completing 63% of his passes, well, his backup, Mark McDonald, completed 70%. Both very efficient passers. And Georgia told us this week they feel the two wide receivers for Syracuse the best they've seen. Well, the coaches are talking about Bob, Rob Moore and Rob Carpenter. These two guys are spectacular. They really stretch the defense vertically. Rob Moore set school records for the number catch with 53 in the yards, made the season with over 1,000, and can he ever leap? Rob Carpenter averaged, Rob Carpenter averaged over 18 yards a catch, and ladies and gentlemen, when he catches it, keep your eye on him because he can really run after the catch. You know, Georgia entered this decade with one of the great running backs of all time, Herschel Walker. Today, they feel they have the best all-around back since that time in Rodney Hampton. Well, he's better than just an average 1,000-yard rusher. He's the leader of the football team. He's the tempo setter. He's the guy that has to go. In fact, when he runs for 150 yards or more, they win. They're 5-0 when he does that this year. And so the Dogs going against the Orangemen. First time they've ever met. The 22nd Peach Bowl Classic. We're going to be back with the opening kickoff in just a moment. This ABC Sports exclusive, the Peach Bowl, brought to you by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? By the companies of the Prudential. Come to the Prudential and build your future on the rock. And by Delta Airlines. We love to fly and it shows. Georgia against Syracuse. The Bulldogs against the Orangemen. Let's go to the sideline now and welcome in Cheryl Miller. Thanks a lot, Gary. You know, the weather, as you already mentioned, hasn't been the greatest here, but it's become a tradition at the Peach Bowl. Last night it rained on and off, and to keep the field dry, they laid a tarp covering all over it. So the field condition isn't that bad. But, Gary, there is a 20% chance of rain during the game, but right now the weather is not a factor. Thank you, Cheryl. It rained a lot last night surface where Syracuse has fared very well this year. They're 2-0 and on grass. Here is Ray Goff, 34 years old. He was an outstanding quarterback for the Georgia Bulldogs. He was the SEC Player of the Year and replacing Vince Dooley. Do you know that he signed with Denver coming out and uh, saw he wasn't going to make it and, and left? He knew he wasn't an NFL football player, so he gave him their bonus back. He gave it back. And not, many those guys, not many of those guys left. <laughs> <laughs> and his bonus to be the head coach of Georgia, a native, and a guy who uh, this year has had a streaky football team. They've lost their last two. 
They had a three-game losing streak earlier in the year, then won four in a row before going into the two-game losing skid. And here is Dick McPherson. He is 58 years old. He was an outstanding assistant to the NFL, seven years a head coach with Massachusetts. I'll tell you this, he respects the SEC. What did he say yesterday? If a job opens up in the SEC conference, don't call me. <laughs> but he said SEC is a power league. Yes, it is. And they're going to see some of that today in Rodney Hampton. The home team is Georgia, so they will be in the red jerseys. They have won the toss, and they will receive. Georgia made one other Peach Bowl appearance. And that was when they beat Maryland 17-16. That was back in 1973. And Syracuse beating LSU last year, two years ago, ending in a tie in the Sugar Bowl against Auburn. And here another SEC team, the Bulldogs. You know, if either one of these teams have an advantage, Gary, it would have to go to Georgia. They're actually playing, like you said earlier, a home ball game. When you look around the stadium, there's an awful lot of red in here. Syracuse, their losses this year to Pittsburgh and Florida State, Penn State, and West Virginia. And there's Rodney Hampton. Be fun to watch him today. He's had some problems with a knee. He missed one game and parts of others that was and still went over 1,000 yards. It was amazing. He had his knee operated on orthoscopically, like on a Monday, and he played the following week. It's amazing. Well, second half of a Mississippi game is where he was able to check back in. Rodney Hampton following the Lars Tate's. And the Tim Worley's, he was a backup to them. And here is Michael Owens, fourth man in the history of Syracuse to rush for 1,000 yards. John Biscop will be kicking off. Georgia will receive. And Georgia has an outstanding kickoff return man in Arthur Marshall, who led the SEC and was sixth to the nation. I sort of had the feeling of talking with the Syracuse coaching staff, but they've been a little concerned through the year with the execution of their kicking game. They weren't really happy with it, and they've had some problems covering kickoffs properly. And here's the guy they may have trouble with, Arthur Marshall. Averaged over 27 yards in return. Yes, he has a long of 71 yards. That's a nice place to start first and 10. Biscop out of Islip, New York, will be kicking off. And this 22nd Peach Bowl Classic is ready to go. Now, the ball falls off the tee, so we'll set it up and address it once again. I really hope it doesn't rain here today for more obvious reasons, but this turf, for some reason, really becomes soft when it rains. And I brought teams in here a number of times, and we played in the mud, and it wasn't fun. We may never get this game started. The ball keeps blowing or falling off the tee. What they'll do, they'll move up their safety, the guy that they use to stay back and guard against the long breakaway run to hold it. Quadri Ishmael will be the guy that will hold. He is Rocket's brother, who, of course, plays for Notre Dame. Has the great speed. So Biscop now has the ball in place, and we're ready to go. Marshall and Rodney McCoy go back. Marshall will have it at the 10, up to the 20, 25, 30, and brings it out to the 34-yard line. And so the Dogs will set it up there. Let's look now at Georgia offensively. Tally, the quarterback. We've mentioned Hampton. Brian Cleveland, the fullback. Marshall and Damon Evans getting the starting call because Sean Cummings was hurt in a car accident. He will play, but opening the game will be Evans. Up front, Moll, a second team, all SCC pick. Play action now by Tally. Throw back to Hampton. To the 40. Hampton's got a first down to the 50. Georgia to the 45 of Syracuse before Rob Thompson caught up with him. That's a real drastic change-up for the Georgia philosophy of offense. They come with a play-action screen pass. They're going to fake to Rodney as you see him right there, number seven, working. Now follow the offensive line as they move out and form the wall, blocking for him on the screen. And this guy doesn't need much room. All he needs is a little crack. He gets a nice block there. 20-yard gain on the play. Straight ahead comes Brian Cleveland, the fullback. Cleveland close to the 40-yard line. 
Rob Burnett made the stop. Let's check defensively. The Orangemen, Burnett, outstanding defensive tackle. Brooks, they think, is going to be the best they've ever had before it's all over. Linebackers, boy, they're good ones. Wooden is their impact player. Bavaro, the leading tackler for the third straight year, and Boosie, number two in that department. Young secondary. Pitch comes back to Hampton. Hampton on a second down and six. Doesn't get much on that as Fred DeRiggi, the nose guard, number 67 on the stop for the Orangemen. They're going to mark the ball at the 42-yard line. We're to bring up third down still, six yards to go. Ray Goff very concerned about his offensive line. He's had to rebuild it, still not satisfied with it. Tally to throw on third. Hampton. And Hampton's got a first down to the 30. Tally took a pretty good shot that time as he released it, but he was on target. 13-yard gain. Sean Whiteman made the stop for Syracuse. Well, as George Hafner, the offensive coordinator, said, they're going to try to balance up their offense now. Tally sits in there nicely. He takes a shot. Halfback was out in the flat, and then when the quarterback held the ball, he worked up the sideline and hit that crease in between the linebacker and the corner. Good job. Georgia this year had more yards passing than rushing. First time since 1963, and Hampton has two catches today at 26 for the season. Give to Hampton on this play, and he gets a couple. George Rooks on the stop for the Orangemen. If Syracuse is going to beat Georgia, they're going to have to contain and shut down Hampton because when he gets running, the whole squad gets excited. They even play better defense. Different football team, aren't they? Yes, they are. The Georgia offensive goals is told to us by George Hampton, the coordinator, was to establish Hampton, getting that 150 yards, and then come off with play action. And off this time, and running the ball will be the fullback Ellis. And Ellis gets to about the 27-yard line. It'll bring up third down and still a good five yards to go. Here's when a team like Georgia isn't as efficient as a lot of true passing teams. They're only 38% efficient on converting the third and long situation. And you know, that, that when you've been a running team and you're gradually converting to a balanced offense, it takes some time. So Ray Goff's team now has a third down and still almost eight yards to go. Cummings is in the ball game at a wide receiver. Tally over the middle. It's complete to Hampton. He falls down, but he's got the first down inside the 15. So Tally and Hampton playing catch on this series, and it's been very effective. Hampton will be to the right side of your screen coming out of the backfield there. He'll be working out now. And he just drops it off there nicely. See, he goes a little circle in, got underneath the linebacker there. In this case, it was David Navarro. First down after a 14-yard gain. Here is Hampton again. Hampton inside the 10. You can see the surge by the 215-pounder out of Houston. David Bavaro was over there. Also, Tim Sanquist, the strong safety. Hampton averaged almost five yards a carry at a high of 184 yards against Kentucky. Now, this is when you're glad you're a real good running team. You get down in here and have to bang heads. Second down, five. Line of scrimmage, the eight-yard line. Hampton again. He's to the five, maybe inside the five-yard line. Bavaro and Fred DeRiggi combining on the stop there. Third down coming up, and about a yard. There's Ugga Four. He's been their mascot since 1981. He looks like he's been around a lot longer than that. <laughs> Third down in the yard. Tally on a roll. Touchdown, Kurt Warner, the tight end. on third down. Now, see, they could go ahead and take this chance and get the tight end out there in the end zone free because they had another down that they didn't make it. They could choose to go for the field goal or take the fourth down and try to the one-yard gain. A very good call by offensive coordinator George Hafner. John Casey, the point after, and he makes it a 7-0 game. 
So on the initial series, Georgia moved it, moved it so effectively. They lead it 7 to nothing. Each year, millions of people send money with West Virginia. Catches coming in, caught that five-yarder, and there's the distance. It was set up primarily, tally to Hampton all the way, either by pass or run, and then this guy, the tight end, with his second touchdown catch of the season. And now Syracuse will get the football for the first time. Casey kicking off. figure this year. Owens, the 1,000-yard rusher. Kevin, an outstanding athlete and fullback. Carpenter, a transfer from Notre Dame, along with Moore, the wide receivers. This line's a good one. It averages 278 pounds. From the 20-yard line now, Syracuse trailing 7-0. Shard a throw, and he's going to set it up on the far side of Michael Owens. Loses a yard. Robert Bell, the nose guard, is there to trip him up on the play. You know, they must have the same game plan. Both teams started out with screen passes. Change up front defensively. George Brewer is going in place of the suspended Hiawatha Berry. He's a true freshman. Linebacker-wise, watch Lewis and Counts. They're really tough outside. And then that secondary, you know about Ben Smith. Ten interceptions. Mike Jones, a true freshman. Loss of one, second and 11 for the 19. Pitches to Owens. 25, and Owens will go out at the 27-yard line. Ben Smith over there reacting on the play. This is what the defensive coordinator from Georgia thought he had to do. Richard Billy said he must shut down their freeze option. Now, what I'm talking about in terms of freeze option is an option where there was a strong fake inside on the play, and then the quarterback comes down the line of scrimmage with the ball. The freeze freezes the defense. Georgia defensive goals, as told to us by Richard Bell, control the option, contain receivers after the catch. Third down and a yard to go. The ball spotted at the 29. Full house tee this time as Walker comes in the backfield with Kennan and Owens. Jardo Owens, and Owens has a first down. Demetrius Douglas, the inside linebacker, made the stop. He's 211 pounds. He's 5 foot 11. He averaged 4.8 a carry. Syracuse offensive goals. George Delone, the coordinator, says, number one, we have to eliminate the turnovers. And then number two, force Georgia to defend the run. Because if they know we can pass, we want them to defense the run. That'll open up our passing game. From the 31, Syracuse or their initial first down. They trail 7 to nothing, just underway on this play, and Shar will go on the option again. Comes back to Owens. Owens breaks that tackle across the 35, and he's very close to the first down. And there is what Dick McPherson said. Owens makes people he, missing. Yes, he can do that. He's not going to run over the top of you. He's going to run around you. He'll stutter step. He'll Owens, fourth guy in history of Syracuse to go over 1,000 yards. to Kennan incomplete. Dwayne Kennan, the fullback, the intended receiver. George Gwynn, the cornerback, covering for Georgia. He wanted to go deep, but the coverage uh, took away the pattern deep. Then he started looking for a layoff man, and he tried to hit it over there toward the sideline, but the defense did a real good job of sagging on the layoff people, and he had no place to go. Bill Shar in high school, threw for 73 touchdowns. <laughs> You know, he never lost a high school football game or a basketball game. I mean, that's quite a record. Second down, 10 now from the 41. And I don't know what happened there. Rob Moore was blocking. Carpenter didn't 
didn't seem to see the ball, and it goes incomplete. It'll bring up a third down. I'm not so sure there wasn't a breakdown in communication offensively. I'm going to watch Shar and see who he's talking to as the receiver. He's talking to Moore as he coming back. He says, you know, I think he was supposed to do something else. He was blocking instead. <laughs> Moore hasn't made very many mistakes. He okay. is something special. You the know, more we watch him, the more we're impressed with him. You know, he was a 48-foot, 9-inch triple jumper in high school and a vertical jumper of 42 inches. Now, you always considered as a coach anyone that did better than 35 inches vertical jump, vertical jump being very good. That would put him in like the 95th percentile. Third down and 10 now for Syracuse. shaw has got time over the middle, complete, and the ball comes loose, and I think Syracuse may have recovered it. That's Dwayne Kennan. Now Kennan he broke a fullback. His, he broke the school record for catching a ball out of the backfield by a running back this year, catching 39. Here he is. Now he'll be coming out of the backfield there to the one side of your screen. Now you'll see him right there to the left. Here he goes. He's working between the tight end and the fullback. A little easy read for the quarterback. Good job of putting your helmet on the ball and popping it out. Good reaction that time. Andrew D's the tight end, able to pounce on the ball. They end up gaining 12 yards on that play and get a first down, but a dangerous 12 yards for Syracuse as they survive what could have been a big turnover. Jar giving a hold. 35 and down at the 32 yard line. Chris Wilson, quarterback, coming up to make the stop. You can see why this guy has been so dangerous. He has a little shake and bake move. He goes 15 yards on the play. Concentrate on Turnell Sims on this replay as he pulls and runs a tackle trap, opening the hole laterally. Here he comes. See him? He's going over there. Now what's a trap? Boom! He kicks out. That opens up the nice hole for Owens, and then he's into the backfield. 37 yards on four carries now for Michael Owens. First down at the 31 of Georgia. 7 0, the Bulldogs with the lead. This time, Kennan, the fullback, hammers ahead. He gains five. It'll bring up second and five. Kurt Douglas made the stop. Kennan, by the way, is one of those versatile guys. He has played all over the place. He's been a wide receiver, he's been a linebacker, now playing a fullback, and they just really like his ability. He is the first Syracuse back to catch 30 passes in the season. Gary, plus he came to school as a quarterback. <laughs> He's going to get confused one of these days. Well, next he'll be the backfield coach. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Second and five now for the Orangemen. Char will get it to his safety valve man, Owens. Owens to the 20, lowers his helmet, and that'll be enough for the first down. He packs a lot up, doesn't he? Demetrius Douglas was on the receiving end of that helmet, making the stop, but it's a first down of the 20. He's just swinging out of the backfield. Shar is doing a good job, and that's why he was able to complete 63% of his passes. He looked downfield and didn't like what he saw. So rather than taking a high-risk throw and force it downfield, he dumps it off to the running back. Good job. Sophisticated passing offense here at Syracuse. They average 241 yards plus per game passing. First down at the 20. Georgia scored on the opening series, and Syracuse trying now to retaliate. Pitch comes back to Owens, to the 15, to the 10, to the 5. He's inside the 5 to the 2-yard line. Ben Smith eventually dragging him down. First and goal. We'll see here on this option that the pullback comes up inside, and that freezes the linebackers momentarily, and that allows him to then come on down the line of scrimmage and get it pitched cleanly. It slows down the pursuit. Now, here he goes. See, fake inside there. Now he comes out. He gets it pitched immediately. The defense is walled off. Nice crease there, and Trinell Sims is leaving it downfield. Great balance, determination, first and goal at the one-yard line. Walker comes in motion. To run efficiently off tackle the goal line, you've got to seal the defense off inside that pursuit, and they sealed it just enough for him to hit the crack and get the touchdown. Here you are now, ladies and gentlemen, you're the linebacker. See them flowing back. Side, see the safeties moving in there. They're moving inside out, but he didn't need much. He's in the end zone. Ninth rushing touchdown of the year for Owens, and now trying to tie it up will be John Biscuit for a 
long time, Syracuse never missed a point after. Into the start of this year, they kicked 262 in a row, which is an NCAA record. And then Biscuit had the dubious distinction of having that streak broken, and this time his kick is up and through, and it's even at seven. So both teams are off and rolling effectively. Both have scored with their first possession. It was Syracuse the other way, and we're even at seven. Let's take another quick look at that touchdown. Very fundamental play. You got the fullback here. Alfonso Ellis getting the kickout block on George Wynn, number 22. No, excuse me, that's Sean Whiteman, number 22, getting that kickout block. Well, that third down, that was the big conversion, that third and 10 that kept that drive going. And there is the drive. So both teams have come out and looked very efficient on offense. You know that Georgia, in their history since 1980, when they come out and score first, they've won 61 and lost eight. That's outstanding. Biscuit will be kicking off again. Marshall and McCoy back deep now for the Dogs of Georgia. Nice kick. And it's going to be Marshall at about the one. You can see why he led the conference in kickoff returns. Brings it out close to the 28-yard line. And that's where Georgia will have it for the second time. Here's the graphic we were talking about. This is an outstanding record. When Georgia has scored first, they've won 61, they've lost eight, tied three when they've scored first. So they scored first in this ballgame. I wonder if that percentage will hold up. Well, they're going to have to score again to win it. <laughs> From the 29 now, Bulldogs will have it for the second time. Marshall is put to the near side. Pitch to Rodney Hampton. He'll reverse direction. A lot of orange there. Good effort, gets about three yards on the play. George Rooks was over there first out of White Plains, New York. Also, David Bavaro, who is the brother of Mark Bavaro, the all-pro tight end for the New York Giants. And boy, does he like to play football. And studying the tapes, both you and I just marveled at his intensity and his consistency in playing. You know, he's led the team in tackling three years in a row. Talking about David Bavaro for the Orangemen as Hampton picking up that yardage, makes it second down and seven. Blitz is coming. Tally gets rid of it just in time to Brian Cleveland, the fullback. First down. That Syracuse doesn't blitz that much. No, they don't. They don't like to. They don't like to be singled up. But I think against a team like Georgia, you can take a chance and, and blitz them some because they're not a big passing team. Well, some good bloodlines in this game, huh? Ishmael's, the Owens's, Owens, Billy playing for the Syracuse basketball team, and we just mentioned Mark Bavaro and David. First down that time. Tally really getting rid of that ball just in time. Hampton again. Hampton to the 45-yard line. A gate of a pair. It'll bring up second down and eight. Good defense by Alvin Brown, the outside linebacker, number 34. He just came in there and stuffed it. The fullback tried to kick him out. He wouldn't allow it. Boy, this Georgia team is really young. Of their 22 starters, 14 are other freshmen or sophomores. That's right. And some are true freshmen. Yeah. So in fact, eight of them are true freshmen on defense. So you can see why Ray Goff in his first years really had some big transitions to make. Maybe you can see why Vince Dooley retired. <laughs> <laughs> Never thought about that. Second down eight now for the 45. Seven all the score. Tally with a lot of time and Good deep broken up nicely that time by Greg Walker, number 17. Greg Walker did an awfully nice job on that one. He was a deep comeback route at about 18 yards. He pedaled nicely. He kept his eye on the receiver. He wasn't peeking into the backfield. Ignoring and did an awfully nice. Now you'll notice it'll be a play action fake. Now that eliminates the help the defensive corner will get underneath him. Now he throws that to the right side of your screen. Now watch him drive on the ball. See him drive on the football. He gets that left hand out there nicely. Greg Walker, number 17. Arthur Marshall, the intended receiver, brings up third down and eight. Valley with a deep drop. He's going to try to run for the first down. He won't get it. He's two yards short as he's dropped at the 50. Terry Wooden made the stop, and Terry Wooden is something special out of Hartford, Connecticut. All-American, great character player, and as Dick McPherson put it, he is our impact player. You know, he 
is also probably going to be a very high pick in the NFL draft. In fact, there, there are agents trying to contact him, and he's having his mother screen all the phone calls in regard to agents contacting him and wanting to represent him. That'll keep him honest. <laughs> you bet. Mom will get after you. That's right. Cheat on me. Fourth down and two, and so Joey Hester will go back and punt for Georgia. Greg Walker back for Syracuse. Ooh, nice punt. Good hang time. He's been very inconsistent in this category, but this time he gets the hang time, and the ball is going to go out of bounds at the 25-yard line is where they're going to mark it. Joey Hester, who was a quarterback a couple of years ago for this Georgia team, that will end up being a 26-yard punt. And so Syracuse will get it for the second time. From the Peach Bowl, it's all even at seven. Atlanta, Georgia, the capital of the Peach State. I'm Gary Bender along with Dick Vermeil and Cheryl Miller as we have now in this first quarter, 325 remaining. It's all even at seven. And Syracuse gets their second opportunity offensively. Wayne Kennedy and Michael Owens will be in the backfield. They have two tight ends. One of those in the slot is Chris Gedney. And the pitch comes to number 44, Owens. Out to the 25-yard line. And Matt McCormick, our linebacker, inside making the stop. So what do you think about number 44? Is that yeah, that's a hallowed great. number or what? Jim Brown, Ernie Davis, Floyd Little, Gary Bender. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait a minute. That's, you've got to be pretty special to wear that number. I wore it 44, first year, uh, sophomore year, Kelso Guy. Well, I, that's, that's a, a little bit of history. <laughs> Bad history, but history just does the same. Second down now, and a long five to go. Char gets it off to two the fullback, and he's buried there at the 26. They may have gotten a yard, and that's all. Good reaction that time by Georgia, in particularly Morris Moe Lewis. And this guy had 10 sacks, number 57 for Georgia. Very, very smart player. They say there's nobody more highly motivated than this guy is. Richard Bell, the defensive coordinator, said last night to us, Gary, which, which really impressed me. He said, this kid, football, playing well is very important to him. You know, and that's, the, that's not a 100% guarantee with all your squad. You, you would think that, but it doesn't always happen that way. That's right. Third down and three now. More and Carpenter split out. is made, and that'll be enough for the first down. That's Kennan again, the fullback. So again, Shaw on a third down, able to convert. And that's going to set the football up just short of the 35. You know, now McKinnon, in the spring practice, was running at the tailback position. Then the start of the fall, they moved him to the fullback. It's a winner he doesn't get confused as to where to line up. Char, by the way, missed the last game as he suffered a sprained thumb. Couldn't play against Louisville in... Tokyo, but he's back in the lineup and looks very sharp today. Number 34, Shaw on the option, now straightens up to throw. He's got his man, Rob Carpenter. That'll be a first down. Close to the 50-yard line is Carpenter. That's a real tough pass to defend. Really tough to defend because what they do is they run a trap pass. You'll see this guard pull here and they're putting the full back in here and they run a trap and he comes down here, gets in the seam as this defensive back is reading run. This is really tough. See, now here he comes down. So he's going to read the option. See, now watch him slide right on behind him, get in there. Very well executed and very difficult to defend. Boy, that really sucked the cornerback up there. See, he's, you know, he's got responsibility to go up and get the pitch. 16-yard gain to the midfield strike. Gedney will go in motion for the orange. There's Shar on the option. Pitches to Owens. Good pursuit Good by Georgia. Good pursuit that time. Greg Jackson, was it 59? Ben Smith was over there. Boy, real good job at pursuing on this one. If you'll take a look at this from the end zone, we have a man down. But you'll follow the linebackers inside there, number 49, 45. See the freeze fake in there. It freezes them. Now they're moving inside out. He gets them walled off. Here comes 59 moving inside out on them. That's a real good job by Norman Cowan. And so Owens not getting up. He is still down. We're going to take a break. It'll be second down and 12 when we return. It's all even at seven. Beavers, a sophomore out of Ambridge, Pennsylvania, comes into replacing. Those Pennsylvania guys are tough. You know, he's from Carlisle, Pennsylvania. He and his brother, of course, the fine basketball player. Sure. Second down now, 12 yards to go. Kennan and Shavers in the backfield. Char trying to 
to throw it again. He's again, he's tangled yeah. up. And, and he is interfered up. with by Ben, ben Smith. Smith. Real good poise by Bill Shar in this one, ladies and gentlemen. He's back there. He's in trouble. He gets back there. Now he sees his tight end, Bill Sch that was his tight end, yes, Chris Getty, number 84, working out there. And he actually uses a hand signal. He uses a hand signal. Watch the quarterback hand signal the receiver telling him where to go. He bounces outside. Now, look at him. See him directing there with the left hand? Tries to get the, the out and up on, on the defender. Pass interference. Push down. That was a good call. He did have pass interference. And he hooked him and tripped him. Ben Smith was a guy guilty of that. Of course, he's their outstanding free safety. Ray Goff didn't exactly agree with that, as you can tell. Oh, no, Ray, he's not just a kid. 34. 34. He's only two years older than my son. They have four <laughs> coaches, by the way, in the SEC who are less than 40 years of age. Yeah, you know something? On his staff, there's only one coach younger than him, and that's Willie McClendon, the running back coach. He'll age in a hurry at this job, though. He did this year. I mean, he said that that series they went through where they lost three in a row, the last one being Ole Miss, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh, he, he aged just telling us the story. That was the toughest loss of the year for him. Yeah. First down now at the 43 after the interference. Three wideouts on this play. And Shar looks to get to the tight end, and Gedney's got it. And he's got a first down. Now, Gedney's quite a football player. You don't hear a lot about him. They kind of use him as a third wide receiver, even though he plays tight end behind Andrew Dees. So the good thing about him, he's an all-around athlete. The guy was, you know, an outstanding high school basketball player. In fact, he was all-conference in basketball. So he has that, you know, overall athletic skill. 12-yard gain sets it up just inside the Georgia 32-yard line. Seven all our score as we have 39 seconds left in this first quarter. Carpenter and Moore split Gedney to the near side. Chambers still on the backfield. Here's the option. Pitch back to Chambers. And Chambers, playing for the injured Owens, takes it inside the 25. A couple of yards short of the first down. Boy, with that option, did you see that time with Turnell Sims, the offensive right tackle? Watch this tackle here. Come outside and then block back after the fake with the quarterback coming down the line of scrimmage. Boy, is this tough on you as a defender. See him hop out there? Now watch him. <laughs> Boy, that smarts a little. They thought Sims is going to be their best lineman this year, but he's had all kinds of nagging injuries. He's yeah. number 62. Here's another look at the same thing. You'll see the defense right there. He gets chopped. That was number 57, Mo Lewis, getting cut down. Chavers is an end result, able to pick up on that play. Seven yards, second and three. Owens is back in now. You see him in motion. Ken of the fullback. Just short of the first down. It'll bring up third down as Demetrius Douglas made the tackle. Gary, if we go all the way back to the early part of the show, we talked about Richard Bell, the defensive coordinator, and one of his goals, the number one thing, was to shut down the freeze option. So far, they have not stopped the freeze option. Char really makes good decisions back there. He does. He appears to be a, a, a good thinker on his feet. Third down and a yard now for the Orange. And they're not going to get the snap because we're coming to the end of the first quarter. You know, Bill Shar was raised in the family of two brothers and six sisters. You've got to be able to think on your feet just to eat. <laughs> you think those sisters told him what to do a time or two? I think so. We're going to be back with the second quarter of play. We're tied at the Peach Bowl. All even at seven as we begin the second quarter. We come back. Syracuse with a third down and a yard to go. The ball resting at the Georgia 23-yard line. They're going to come to a full house tee again with Kennan, Walker, and Owens in the backfield. Char taking a lot of time. Intercepted. It's intercepted. It's picked up. Running with the football is Lewis. The linebacker, Mo Lewis, to the 20. 10, and knocked down at the 5. Here's 53 to meet Douglas leading him down there. 
getting some up. He show Mo can really show his speed in this one. 77 yard return and his second interception of the season. That's Dwayne McKinnon making the play. The pass is intended for Walker. Hand off to Rodney Hampton and he hits a wall and goes nowhere. So it'll be second and goal from the five. Mo Lewis, who's been such an outstanding player this year for the Bulldogs. Here's another Enzo look at the last play. You see they're faking an off-tackle run that they ran earlier for a first down. Now he lays it out there. Mo Lewis didn't take the fake. So now he's picking up his blockers. A wall is forming down there, and he's using his 4 6 40 speed. Boy, he had an escort, too, didn't he? Yes, he did. Second and goal from the five. Tally on the option, and Tally hit hard at the one, and a flag has been thrown. I'll tell you, down here in the goal line, David Bavaro plays goal line linebacker inside there as well as any linebacker we saw all year, Gary. He really does a good job. He likes to tattoo you. He'll jump right up over the top of the pile to get the guy in the backfield. There was not a flag. I thought I saw one come down. No flag. It'll be third and goal now for the two. McPherson has to be right now stunned after that interception. There he was talking to Paul Pasquale. Tally the pitch to Hampton. And oh. Hampton's not going to get there. It's going to be fourth and goal. See what I mean about Navarro? David Bavaro. Now, he doesn't wait for the play to develop. He attacks at number 59, moving inside out. Look at him go. Pads down. Look at him. He gave his body a shot there. He's going after him. Looks like a missile going through there. If they run inside, he has good timing, and he leaps up over the top of the pile and tries to stick him in the air as the tailback jumps in the air. So now, Casey will attempt the field goal, and this is going to be a 20-yard attempt. Well, he's 100%, 8 for 8 in his career, kicking inside the 30-yard line, so chances are he's going to make it. Joey has will hold. Michael Wallace will snap. The left foot kick is good. And Georgia, after the interception, able to get three points out of it. And the Bulldogs will lead for the second time today. Ten to seven. If I had a Z, it'd be silver. No. Black. Germany. Man. And Terrapins. Georgia scored first when quarterback Andy Johnson hit Jimmy Poulos with a short screen pass and turned it into what many say was one of the greatest runs by a Georgia player, resulting in a 62-yard touchdown. Georgia won it 17-16. Mo Lewis momentarily has really changed the complexion of this football game. Syracuse had a third and one and tried to throw and uh, Dickie wonders well as they were moving the ball in a short yardage situation why they came out with that kind of play. Well that's a philosophical thing. Myself philosophically if my offense was moving the ball I didn't do those kind of things. It's when we weren't moving the ball very well we take that kind of an option take that kind of a risk. Ishmael will return this one for the Orange and he brings it out to the 28 yard line. Let's go to the sideline now and here's Cheryl Miller. Thanks a lot, Gary. With me is Tim Green, the former defensive tackle for the Orangemen, is currently an Atlanta Falcon. And right now, are you surprised at how quickly Georgia's come out? I really am. I think they've come out with a lot of intensity. And, hey, those, those Georgia guys are on fire. You know, Tim, I know everybody, football players, likewise, would love to play in the NFL. But do you miss playing college football? I do miss it, especially being here today and being with the guys around the guys this week and seeing the kind of fun they're having and the camaraderie. The NFL is a lot of fun, too, but in a different way. It's, it's a, it's a higher level of competition. But here, I think it's a lot more uh, friendship, and, you know, I, it, it's it's fun. I miss it. All right, Tim, enjoy the game. Let's go back to you, Gary. Thank you, Cheryl. Tim will be playing for a new coach next year here in Atlanta. And uh, he's used to that. <laughs> I just, you took the words out of my mouth. We're going to have a delay of game. They didn't get the ball snapped in time. By the way, that's a Peach Bowl record by Mo Lewis, 77-yard return. Repeat, first down. The old record was 41 yards by Jay Chesley of Vanderbilt. That occurred in 74 against Texas Tech. So shar has got to recover from that, and now we'll start with a first and 15 after that five-yard delay of game. Well, the smart thing would be to not try to get all 15 yards back in, in one play. Divide it up in three shots. Orangeman trail by three, 10 to seven. Start. 
stuck hard as he gets a yard. That's, and that's a nice all. job. Boy, that's, that's McCormick, number that's 49. McCormick. Yes, he did a nice job. He was a walk-on. He was not even given a scholarship, and he worked his way into the program and earned the scholarship. And it looks like Owens is going to be down again. He went out earlier to shake it up, and that was some hit that time to McCormick out of Miami of Florida. He went to Westminster Christian High School there. A walk-on is mentioned, and he earned a scholarship. He started seven games, and he delivered a blow there. It'll be second down and 14 when we come back. The Orangemen of Syracuse trailing by three. Sugar Bowl, New Year's night on ABC. Well, Michael Owens has to come out of the ball game for the second time. He took a real shot that time from Matt McCormick. Chavers replaces him at tailback. Second down and 14 now for the Orangemen. Trying to recover from a 77-yard interception. They trail by three. John on the option. Pitch comes back to Chavers. And Chavers gets a couple. I tell you, Bill Goldberg almost intercepted that pitch. The defensive tackle penetrated across, almost was in the line of flight. Robert Bell eventually made the stop for Georgia. I'm not sure, but I think they made a mistake on this. The offensive guard pulled the wrong direction. Watch this as the play is run. He pulls in the wrong direction. He didn't pull left, the play's going right. <laughs> Somebody was wrong. Boy, Goldberg almost had a big play. Yes. Third down now, and still 12 yards to go. This is D's in motion. Shot to D's. He's trying to get the first down, lunging forward. He's close. I don't think he made it, Gary. Good effort. You know, when you bring a man in motion and move him around, it tends to loosen up the area that you attack. It is going to bring up fourth down. D's tried desperately to get what they needed, but he falls about a half yard short, and Ken Hawkins will come in and punt the football. He's a big guy, six foot six. Hawkins out of Maslin, Ohio. Tremendous leg, but very inconsistent. Yeah, this is what Coach McPherson says. He doesn't mind coaching the expected, but in his two kickers, he's concerned about coaching the unexpected. It bothers him. And here's one of those moments. Hawkins will punt it to Arthur Marshall. And he gets a pretty good punt. Marshall will back inside the 20. Hey! Is he belted there. Tremendous coverage that time by the Orangemen. That is Tony, Tony Matamora. 43-yard punt and obviously no return. <laughs> obviously no return. Take a look at this one, ladies. How would you like to have to catch this one? Beautiful tackle. Tail down, head up, shoulder straight. It's important to Infinity to build fast cars, but it's more important to build perfectly balanced cars. And this harmony of balance comes from thinking about the effective speed on such other luxury attributes as comfort and styling. Infinity cars are primarily driver's cars, and the luxury experience is one that you most enjoy while you're in the car and moving. Infinity. Even when all of Company B heads for the phone, it's no problem for Gail Godfrey. Delta Airlines, Gail Godfrey. You all out of love in Texas? Yes, that is confirmed. I got some friends who want to talk to you now. Just hold on a second. Thank you. Cincinnati, Ohio. New York City. Monroe, Louisiana. Albuquerque, New Mexico. San Jose, California. Portland, Oregon. Here, Montana. You're all set. Thank you for calling, Delta. Bye-bye. Hi, Gail. Did you get many calls this afternoon? One. Delta, we love to fly and it shows. Dick, let's watch this again. <laughs> I don't think Marshall wants to. The life of a punt returner. Oh. <laughs> Big stick by Matamora. So as an end result at the 19 is where Georgia will have it. They have a 10 to 7 lead. Greg Talley. Alvin Brown was over there first. Help arrived as Talley gets to the 27-yard line. He'll be a couple of yards short of the first down. Terry Wooden made the stop. Talley's not very big. 
He's 6'1", weighs 180, but he's a competitor, and more importantly, he's an outstanding leader for this Georgia team. You know, and there's been some controversy created this year within the Georgia program in terms of the rotation of quarterbacks, and we asked coaches about it, and he said, well, he plays as long as he plays well. <laughs> yeah, the other guy is Preston Jones, who's the backup. So on a second down and two, trying to pick up the first down, Georgia straight ahead, and that was Alfonso Ellis. Let's go back to Cheryl Miller. Thanks a lot, Gary. With me again is Tim Green. And, Tim, this year's season for the Falcons wasn't a very good one, but you guys are looking forward to a draft choice first round. Well, yeah, you're right, Cheryl. Uh, I think the Falcons and myself would rather not have that dubious distinction of having the first pick of the draft because it means we're a long way from the playoff. But uh, I, I think that the organization down here will make the best of it, and I would look for them to pick the linebacker from Alabama, Kevin McCants. Well, all right, we'll see if they are, are able to get them. Let's go back to you, Gary. On a third one trying to get the first down rolling out. Now he says Keith McCants is coming out. He's got a yeah. scoop, doesn't he? That's news to me. Yeah. <laughs> I think Bill Curry is glad to, not glad to hear that. McCants uh, could come to the NFL, but has not uh, in any way indicated such. And of course, he'll be playing against Miami of Florida in the Sugar Bowl. Third down on the one, they tried to roll out and get that one, and now it's fourth and one. It's obvious that they're trying to stay balanced even by down and distance situation because the old Georgia teams of the past, hey, they'd run on third and one. There's Joey Hester to punt the football. Nice high punt. A little hard to return. Greg Walker calling for the fair catch, makes it at the 32-yard line. So Syracuse will start there. Monday, ABC Sports will kick off 1990 with tradition, fun, and excitement. The New Year festivities begin at 11 a.m. Eastern with a 101st Tournament of Roses Parade, live from Pasadena. And then our bowl triple header begins as Dick and I will be in Orlando to bring you the Florida Citrus Bowl, Illinois, going against co-champion Virginia, the ACC. Continuing on then later, we'll have the Rose Bowl and the Sugar Bowl, a bowl fest, 90. There's Michael Owens. Looks like he had a bad night. <laughs> In the bad days, been out of the game twice. Gain of one that time, straight ahead as Syracuse still reeling a little bit from that interception as Kennan picked up a yard. They're coming over and asking him what time of day it is. If he can give him the time, he can go back and play. <laughs> or how many fingers I hold yeah, up. Yeah. Twelve. <laughs> <laughs> McKinnon got a yard, and that's all. It looked like Syracuse was really on the move, and then on a third and one, Shar throws the interception. It goes 70, 70 yards the other way. Georgia gets the field goal, and that's where we are right now. 10 to 7. 8.35 left in the first half. Shar, out of time. They, had a call, they could call defensive oh, holding nobody that. down there. The guy supposedly was going to be Rob Carpenter. He didn't get downfield. Oh, they, they just blocked him. They just blocked him. You'll see Carpenter coming off the ball here. He runs downfield on play action. Seems trotting. Now he's going to burst upfield. Now watch this. Boom. <laughs> I don't know what you call that. I would say that was a chuck. Do you think there was a contact made in that? Might have been. Now, the only way you could get by with that, I think, now, would be if the contact was made long before the ball was thrown. Yeah, that was uh, Ben Smith. He was still a blocker if the ball's went through. That ball was in the air 55 yards yeah. to nobody. Third down and nine. That's getting in motion once again. completion to the 45 yard line and that's Rob Moore that is a big completion for the Syracuse team 22 yard gain on the play what we're going to see here is a young junior quarterback playing his first year as a starter really show poise steps up in the pocket keeps sliding keeps sliding and he just waits for the pattern to develop here it comes across in the zone Rob Moore makes the play they've got to get the ball in his hands if they're going to win this thing he's the big play guy this year, average per catch at over 20 yards per reception. And that was a 22-yarder, so that's right in his department. First down at the 45, Shaw on the option. This is a reverse. Coming to Carpenter. Carpenter directing blockers. Carpenter the 30 and knocked down just short of the 25 by Al Jackson. Very well executed that time by Syracuse. 
You're going to see on this play, the linemen, they're running the trap option in here. See them sitting inside, the fake inside now. <laughs> no one knows where the ball is going. See Georgia going right. Now they recognize it. You're going to get some peel back blocks. Now you've got the ball in the hands of a guy that can really run downfield. Carpenter transfer from Notre Dame from Amityville, New York. That's an 18-yard gain on the reverse. And all of a sudden, Syracuse moving again. They trail by three, 10 to seven. Ooh, big hole. Chambers, Chambers to the 10. First and goal as he's dropped at the eight-yard line. So Chambers playing in place of the injured. Michael Owen showing some quickness there. He didn't carry the ball that much, 16 times during the regular season. He got very good blocking by the two offside linemen kicking out and the big tackle pulling through as the fullback filled, and he took it right up inside. Good execution by the offensive linemen. See him pulling there now? Gary McCummings, all right, there goes 69. Bernard up leading through it. Good running, good execution. First and goal now at the eight yard line. Pick up on the play. Kennan strong. Oh, good defense. Smack down in a hurry. That's McCormick again. Also on the play was Kurt Douglas. Douglas. Kurt Douglas. Both of them there and no place to go for Kennan. They say the best thing Kurt Douglas does, number 43, is attack anything that runs right at him. He's a street fighter type guy. He'll fight you in that close quarters. Very physical inside. And so they lose a couple of yards. Back to the 10. Will it be second and goal there? Moore will be split out along with Carpenter. Sharp pressure coming. The ball oh. almost intercepted again by Mo Lewis. Mo almost got that one again. <laughs> Mo can't believe it. He said, one Mo, Mo. <laughs> Already set a peach bowl record with a 77-yard interception, so it's third and goal now from the 10-yard line. They better stay away from number 57. Owens watching. Gidney sitting right next to him. Yeah. Chambers has replaced Owens at the tailback spot. They like to draw out of this formation. It's going to bring up a field goal field attempt. Goal. George Wynn defending well. They had that one covered all the way. There they was did. just they absolutely that. nothing there. See, what they were hoping to throw it up there because Carpenter has good leaping ability and just get it up in the air and let him catch it. Here's an isolated look at it. You'll see him fading to the outside. The defender there, number 22, George Wynn, just sitting there waiting. He really wasn't playing man-to-man. -man. No chance. Field goal attempt by, by Biscuit. He was 14 of 18 in the regular season. Mark McDonald will hold. He was 10 for 12 inside the 30. 27-yard attempt by Biscuit. And Biscuit's kick is up. And it is no good. It is wide right. says, let's keep it together as they still trail by three. Tidal Wave hits Oklahoma B Sports. Dick, nothing's automatic, is it? Well, no. See, that college hash mark being way over here is tougher. It's actually 17 feet closer in the NFL to kick a field goal over there because the hash mark's closer to the goal line area. That makes it a little bit tougher field goal than it would have been otherwise. He hit it well, but wide right. And so a missed opportunity to tie the game up from 27 yards away. This is Ellis, the fullback. Ellis has been hurt most of the year for this Georgia team. Lost his starting job to Brian Cleveland. The playing a lot today is David Bavaro made the stop on Ellis. Ellis is out of Thomasville, Georgia. He's another one of those guys that had his knee scoped, missed a game or two, and is back in and playing. Orthoscopic surgery. I can remember the first year I ever heard of it was 1978. Coaching at the Eagles. Had a tight end named Keith Crefley. We have a new quarterback. Preston Jones is coming in quarterback, replacing talent. He's a better passer. And off again to Ellis. And Ellis on two carries has a first down for Georgia. So Preston Jones was the South Carolina High School Player of the Year his senior year. Now we have some uh, unpleasantries taking place now around the line of scrimmage. We've had very few flags. 
flags. And no sense starting now. As you can see, 522 left in this first half. 10-7 in this favor is, of Georgia. The second quarter has been, like we said, Gary, the, the second best offensive production quarter. Actually, it's their first quarter. Their first quality quarter in regard to scoring points. Long bomb. Jones is going to throw it to Marshall. And, and he's out of bounds. Preston Jones, you can see, knowing how his man was so wide open had he kept that ball in the field of play. John Whiteman defending on the play for Syracuse. Jones is a big guy, 6'3", 220 pounds. Yeah, and he has that strong arm. See, oh, he's out of bounds. He is out of bounds. But as I tried to say earlier, the second quarter has been their most efficient quarter scoring points. They've scored 94 points in this quarter through the year. I knew what you meant. Yeah. But did you really? Yep. Boy, you're smarter than I. <laughs> second down 10 from the 34. There's Tally getting it off to Hampton. Ooh, good tackle. He gets it to close to the 44-yard line, which is close to another first down. Rob Thompson hitting. Boy, that Robbie Thompson can really tackle you. You know, he's a, he was an academic All-American football player, and he always has help from Bavaro. I don't think Bavaro, I think he must be involved in every tackle. Yeah, he's all over the place. He said pound for pound, he gets the most out of his ability. Another thing they said, he's so knowledgeable. And this Georgia team... With the interception and the opening drive for a touchdown has a three-point lead, 4.56 left in the first half. Here's Hampton. A lot of congestion this time as on a first down, he gets maybe a yard. Bavaro again on the stop for Syracuse. Here he is getting up. You know what you have to be alert for with the Georgia team is every once in a while they go into a real quick tempo offense and they just get up in the line of scrimmage and snap it. Off they go and they just do that and they try to throw you off balance defensively. Are you surprised they brought Jones in? You know, Ray Goff said we let Talley play as long as he plays well. We don't have a two-quarterback system, but well, here we are. Well, you got four minutes and 30 seconds to go at the half. They're probably planning on throwing the ball just a little bit more. Well, here's one of those. Jones backside and good pressure coming from Terry Wooden. Boy, Wooden. that was a good one. Yes, sir. Wooden this year had nine sacks, which led the team. He was a semifinalist for the Butkus Award, and there he is. He came from the backside, and Jones never did feel his presence at all. But here he is, number 90, the right side of your screen coming in. Now, he whips the blocker right there, goes right on around him. Now, you can see that Jer Russell before, number 67, thought he couldn't get there, but he, the quarterback had to hold the ball. Take another look at it from the end zone. See, he's going to make the fake. Now, the quarterback looking to his left. He can't see this guy coming. So it's a third and nine now for the Dogs. Pressure, step up in there. Jones, and he can't do that. He's going to lose yardage. It'll bring up fourth down and a long ways to go. That was George Rooks who tripped him up, a sophomore. And so now Georgia will have to punt the football. 3.58, the clock running here in the second quarter. Rod Burnet also on that last play defensively. This is Walker back to return the punt. He's averaged seven and a half yards of return this season. Hester out of Cairo, Georgia. Ooh, nice punt. Hard to return. Very, this very high. Good hang time. Walker's going to try, though. Oh, and he got five yards. He squeezed five yards out of there somehow. To the 26 now is where Syracuse will have it. Michael Wallace, who snapped the football, was down there to make the stop. 10-7, the Dogs lead the Orange. Got this Gersh Sweeties pass and raced 87 yards for a touchdown. The Orange went on to win their first bowl game and with it their only national championship. Well, you're looking at Bo Schimbeckler, his final coaching job for the Michigan Wolverines, and he'll be part of a back-to-back -back bid for the national championship. The Michigan Wolverines going against USC in the Rose Bowl, and then Miami will take on Alabama in the Sugar Bowl, all part of the Bowl Fest 90. Back-to-back -back bids for the national championship. Sharp back to throw now. Flag on the play, and the catch is made by Carpenter, holding at the 47. That would be enough for the first down, but as Dick indicated, it'll lose your use of the hands, possibly holding, and that's what it is. This offensive line of Syracuse at the start of the year was voted by Sporting News to be the best offensive line in the country entering the season. They've had some injuries, but they have played very well. 
I think the holding penalty was called on Gary McCummings, number 64, the offensive left guard here in pass protection. Let's follow Gary. Watch him get caught. He's working deep. He's doing a good job right there. It's all legal right there. It's all legal right Oh, I don't know. That's a questionable call. Gary, I'm going to have to go with you on that one. <laughs> I don't think he really held him. A little handful of red jersey may have given him away. <laughs> Gary's dad is the president of Cheney State University in Pennsylvania, just outside of Philadelphia. Both his parents have their PhDs. First down now and 20 yards to go after the penalty. Line of scrimmage just across the 15. 10-7, the Bulldogs. Char and the big tight end, Dean, brings it out to the 30, so they get a lot of it back. They're still five yards short of the first down. He is a massive target at 6'6", 250 out of Babylon, New York, and he latched onto that one, and they get all but five that they need for the first down. Well, you know, he's an all-around athlete. I'll tell you what I'm really impressed with is Shar just sitting in there and showing great poise, bouncing, and looking for it. And then he throws the dart right in between the linebackers. He pays the price when old Benny Smith, number 26, come up there. Second down now, still five yards to go. They got 15 on that one. Shar trying to set up a screen with Chambers, and Chambers in a heap of hurt there as he's going to be stormed down just across the 25. Good reaction that time by Kurt Douglas. Casey Barnum, number 90, I think, came inside out on that as well, Gary. And he, he's been a backup player, just a young kid. Good read by the young defensive lineman following that screen. So now they have close to 10 yards to go for a first down. Let's make it third and nine as the line of scrimmage, the 26. 152 left in the first half. Georgia 10, Syracuse 7. that but he's got time throws it deep for Carpenter and he can't get to it he was having trouble tracking that one as George Quinn was there with him and to turn his body once you start doing that yeah. and try to locate the football that is tough it is really tough it was go just going deep they went to a two deep coverage but they sagged the two inside safeties and played the two corners deep outside covering the, the halves of the field and you can see George Quinn was in position all the way there was no way either one of them could get to the football Pretty good defense. Bashar trying to go deep, and that's what George has said. They would try that six or seven times a game. And thus far, it hasn't been a successful try by the Syracuse team. We'll see George win, a little defensive back, number 22 on that play, is only five foot eight. You know, he's a mighty mite, so they're trying to get the big, tall receivers downfield on them. They'll out jump them. Hawkins with a punt, very high. Marshall calling for the fair catch, and at the 31, he'll take it. So Georgia will have it there. 43 yard punt that time by Hawkins. So Georgia will set it up there and let's see, are they gonna come back with Preston Jones once again at quarterback? They open the game with Greg Talley. Hawkins out of the school has produced a lot of good football players. Washington High School in Maslin, Ohio. Yes, it is Preston Jones coming in there. You know, he broke a bone in his wrist in the spring game, and it was took him a long time. It was his right wrist, so it took him a little while to really get going this year. Had a great spring prior to that injury. First down now at the 31. The Dogs with the lead by three. And that time, Hampton got hung up with the official. He could not clear for the pass as uh, a little congestion there. One of the zebras got in the way, and Preston Jones. <laughs> zebras? Well, Don't be disrespectful. I'm sorry. I'm yeah, sorry. Darn it. I'll, that's my New Year's resolution. I'll change that. <laughs> Somebody Got two out days there. to change that now. Somebody out there loves that guy. <laughs> <laughs> There's the numbers on Jones thus far. I called him a lot worse, Gary. I know you have. <laughs> I won't repeat it either. No, you couldn't. You get fired. <laughs> There's Hampton getting knocked out of bounds at the 35-yard line. Gets about four, maybe five. David Bavaro over there once again. That's why they started the game, throwing, throwing the football to Hampton on that first series that they took in for a touchdown. Line of scrimmage now the 35. It'll be third down and still six yards to go. 34 years old, Ray Goff. Boy, what a football player he was. He was seventh in the Heisman Trophy ballot. Yep. Plus, he was smart enough to marry one of the cheerleaders before he got out of this place. <laughs> Took his team to the Sugar Bowl. Oh. There's Jones in trouble. One swipe 
by Rooks and then help arrive. Rooks got through there first and Burnett finished him off. I thought he grabbed the helmet. It looked like it and from this angle maybe he didn't. So that will lose all the way back to the 28 yard line is where they're going to mark it. And so it will bring up a fourth down. Fourth and 14. Hester will come in and punt once again. One oh two left in this first half. Greg Walker will go back now for Syracuse. Now Syracuse is going to call a timeout. They want to uh, discuss this one. So the Orangemen asked for a timeout with one oh two left in the first half. Great. Goff will bring his troops over there. Coach Goff said, you know, if the squad plays hard with a lot of emotion, we can beat these people. But if they don't, he said, if we play like we did against Georgia Tech, it could be a long day. Well, he's trying to do something with this football team that uh, has not been characteristic of Georgia through the years, and that's to be a better passing team. And for the first time in many, many years, they had more passing yardage than they did in the rushing game. So he's trying to put his own stamp on this team and try to uh, establish his own characteristics and they've had some discipline problems he's had to weed out some guys a couple players uh, dismissed from the squad for this game and trying to assert his authority you know in the first year of coaching if given those opportunities you better take advantage of the suspension and get rid of them because that helps set the standards and it raises the level of expectation for everybody else that ball was almost blocked by Ishmael and the ball is rolling around inside the 25 a nice roll for Georgia it'll go down to the 20 yard line Joey Hester gets a real roll on that one it'll end up being a 51 yard punt and at the 20 yard line now Syracuse with 49 seconds left has a football you know against West Virginia at the end of the first half they took the ball down the field and scored with 19 seconds left by hitting I think it was Robert Moore for a touchdown it was they, they always have the chance to score these guys Orangemen will come out. They have trailed twice in this football game. Seven to nothing, tied it up. Now trail 10-7. Well, they've got those two guys, Moore and Carpenter, who are really double trouble. And I know Georgia is very concerned about them each time they snap the football. I think in the second half they're going to have to come out and make a better effort to get the ball to Robert Moore. Here comes Carpenter in motion. Shar, the quarterback, blitz coming. He gets it off. Green. But Kenan, the fullback, and he gets out close to the 25. Boy, he had some real pressure coming that time. <laughs> well, you always get more pressure on the screen pass because you're going to release them. You want them upfield so your offensive lineman can release and get into the screen wall. That was George Brewer who came flying through their second down, a gain of four yards. It'll be second down and six. Time running, 21 seconds. You can see it on the screen. And here comes Shar sneaking the ball. He gets the first down. They're going to have used a timeout here, you would assume, as he brings it out to the 32. Bill Goldberg made the stop. 15 seconds. Well, they're times. not going to use the timeout. They had to stop the clock as they moved the sticks. Shar back again. And he just threw that one away. Wait a minute. It's picked off. Picked up by Demetrius Douglas, and Douglas takes it inside the 10. What happened to that ball? I don't know. Maybe it got tipped, because when you said he's just throwing it away, I thought that's exactly what he was doing. It must have been, and the time has expired, so Georgia cannot capitalize on the interception. Quarterback number 19 in the left middle of your screen. Let's see what happens here. Let's see if the ball got tipped. Yeah, it did. It got batted up in the air. Here it comes. Here comes Douglas, number 53. Flannery comes over to try to stop the play, but he gets loose. Here comes the quarterback. You threw it. You make the tackle. Well, I guess two big interceptions, and Georgia... New Year's Day celebration on television. Bowl Fest 90. The fun begins with an American classic. The beauty, the pageantry, the tradition. It's all a part of the 101st Tournament of Roses Parade, live from Pasadena. Then it's on to Orlando for the Florida Citrus Bowl. Here the fighting Illini of Illinois take on ACC co-champion Virginia. Then two key back-to-back -back games in the race for the national title. First, we return to Pasadena for the granddaddy of them all, the 76th Rose Bowl. Michigan's Bo Schembechler has never won a national crown. Now in his last game as coach, his Wolverines will make a bid for that title as they meet Pac-10 champ USC. 
Then the Bowl Fest nightcap follows as the second rack Miami Hurricanes roar into New Orleans to state their claim for number one. They take on SEC champ Alabama in the USF and G Sugar Bowl. Kick off the 90s with the biggest party on television. Bowl Fest 90, Monday, right here on ABC Sports. Step into the future. Now at your Oldsmobile dealer. This second half ready to go. The 22nd Peach Bowl Classic from Atlanta. The Dogs of Georgia with a 10 to 7 lead and they'll be kicking off and Syracuse receiving. John Casey kicking off. That's a return type ball. Yes, sir. It's a low line driver. And Ishmael's the guy to bring it up. Quadri Ishmael and he's out to the 27 close to the 28 yard line. The big play thus far this football game occurred on an interception by Mo Lewis and this is a record 77 yard interception a peach bowl record. It was a third down and short yardage situation they were trying to fool the defense. Mo Lewis a very intelligent football player was not fooled and you can see that he has that 4 6 40 speed as written in the press books this young man can run. Well, Syracuse kept them out of the end zone. They had to settle for a field goal, and that's where it stands right now. 10 to 7 in favor of Georgia. Mike Owens, by the way, is back into the football game after taking himself out twice, shaken up. He's the tailback. Kennan is the fullback, and this is Kennan carrying the ball. And he fumbled it. He fumbled it at the 35. Ben Smith, the free safety, pounces on it, and Georgia has a major break. Actually, this was a second effort run by Dwayne Kennan. He went piling in there, just kept running. He would not quit, <laughs> and they finally stripped it out. Third turnover for Syracuse. One fumble and two interceptions. Tally's back in at quarterback. He's going in the This one's intercepted. It's intercepted by Terry Wooden, the linebacker, and he picks it off almost the same area that Mo Lewis did for Georgia. And he brings it back out. So they give it back. And Syracuse will have it at the midfield strike. That's Terry Wooden's eighth interception on his career. It looked awfully easy. This is a poor judgment decision on the quarterback. He had time. There were two orange jerseys all, one behind him, one in front of him. Had to be colorblind to throw that one. He just didn't see him. Terry Wooden, who's done such an outstanding job for this football team. Ray Goff is saying, we get one and we turn right around and give it back. They're going to mark the ball at the 45 of Syracuse is where they'll start this. Shar now on the option will keep. And he's hit hard as he gets to the 49. Kurt Douglas was there first. You know, Shar is not a running quarterback, but he does a pretty good job of running the option. Now, Mark McDonald, number six, really runs the option well. If they're going to run that a lot, we might see Mark, the backup quarterback, come in and run it. So Shar that time picking up... Uh, a couple of yards on the play, and now we're going to have an official's timeout as this is a final now from the John Hancock Bowl in El Paso, Texas A&M, getting beat by Pittsburgh. Now, Paul Hackett was named as the coach of Pittsburgh, replacing Mike Gottfried, and so Hackett is a winner as the Pitt Panthers win that one. He'll do a good job with him. He has tremendous experience, great exposure to offensive people, going all the way back to Mike White at the University of California. Did a good job there, USC at, under Johnny Robbins, and I think then he goes to the 49ers under Bill Walsh as a quarterback coach. Then he goes to the Dallas Cowboys. My gosh, that's pretty good exposure. It sure is. Well, we're holding up everything now while they fix the chain. The weakest link, what's that old story? Yeah. You know, if I were coaching the defense right now of Alabama, which I'm not, I would go ahead and say, run the option all you want, but I'm going to force the quarterback, Shar, to keep the football. I'm going to take away the fullback, and I'm going to take away the pitch. Shar, you're going to have to run with it. Well, uh, they try to fix the chain, and we're going to take a break as we come back at eight. So Syracuse with a second at eight after the interception by Terry Wooden had set it up at the 45. Now they have it at their own 47. 10-7, Georgia with the lead. Just underway in the second half of play. Char on the option. Now straightens up to throw. Intended for more. Picked up. This is George Wynn. Wynn to the 35. To the 30. Carpenter giving chase and got him at the 21. Well, this is the second half of turnovers. Already the third of the second half. It's that trap option pass. He fakes 
the trap option and throws it out there. 22 win was just sitting there waiting for it. He had rolled up there because he had safety help behind him. Now he becomes a running back. And uh, we quickly have Georgia running the ball inside the 20 yard line to the 17. So what's happened, we had a fumble recovery by Georgia, then an interception by Wooden, and now an interception by Wynn of Georgia. As Alfonso Ellis that time carrying the ball to the 17-yard line. Pick up a five, it'll be second and five. You know, it's all right to turn the ball over as long as your opponent will do the same thing. Yep. <laughs> hey, balance out. Now it's uh, Georgia's turn, right? Kevin Maxwell comes in motion for the dogs. Give to Hampton, who had only 13 yards in the first half. And he works hard for this, getting very close to the first down. Running backs like Hampton, when they get down inside that 10-yard line area, 15-yard line area, they, they have a sixth sense, or they almost smell the end zone. They find a way to get it in there. I just keep giving him the ball. He carried the ball nine times in the first half, averaged only 1.4, way off of his yearly well, yeah. average of 4.9. Well, they only carried the ball nine times. You know, running backs have to carry the ball. What did they say last night? We want him to run the ball up to 25 times or more. And if he gains 150 yards, they've won every time, That's five right. times. Third down, they were a yard short of the first down. Marshall comes in motion. Here's Hampton. Boy, he is pushed backwards in a hurry. Okay, good defense Boy, by Robert. I Burnett. guess. Look at that. Also, Boosie, number 55, Bavaro, the entire inside linebacking core was in on that. Rob Thompson, they really sent Hampton backwards. But did he get the first down before that? David. Now we're going to have holding against Georgia. David Bavaro is just an exceptional linebacker within this type of defensive play, the goal line and the short yardage play. He just does a super job. Here he is right here. Just take a look at him. Watch him play. He is an attacker. See, he's going up in there after him. Now just keep watching him. Boom, and then he knocks him back, and he had some help from Rob Burnett, number 70. What do we have here? It's holding against Georgia. The option being any, explained to uh, yeah. David Bavaro. We really don't have an option. Nope, they've got to take the 10-yard holding penalty. I think we're going to see if they had had the first down on the run before they uh, determined where to mark the ball. Now they move it back, and it's outside the 23-yard line. That's a big penalty. Is it ever? It's third down now and 10 yards, almost 10 and a half to go. Both teams making a lot of mistakes here in this beginning of the second half of play. Third down, ten and a half. Ten seven, Georgia. Callie, a little pitch forward, a shovel pass to Hampton, and he gets to about the 18-yard line. It'll bring up fourth down. Dan Boosie was over there, the number two tackler out of Mentor, Ohio, making the stop for the Orange. The old Jack Curtis shuffle pass. That would go as an incomplete pass had the ball been fumbled as Casey will come in and attempt the field goal. See the quarterback starts to sprint out, then he just boldly flips the ball right up there. I've seen that break a number of times this year. They get some yards. What they did do is they got it in the middle of the field. They did it. They got it in the middle of the field for a little easier kick for the field goal. 35-yard attempt now by Casey. He's 6 for 10 from this distance at this year. He kicked a 20-yard field goal earlier. This kick has a lot of leg on it, and it's no good. It is no good. Wide right. And so Casey misses. And Syracuse is able to somehow survive another turnover. And so the Orangemen will have it back. They still trail by three. Played three quarters of the West Virginia game a few weeks back and did an awful good job, both running and passing. He had a sprained ankle. He got hurt against Louisville. Here's a handoff to Owens, and Owens comes out for a couple of yards, maybe three, before he's tripped up there. Owens in the first half, able to pick up 62 yards on nine carries, which is a good average of 6.9, but he had to take himself out twice as he was shaken up. McDonald is a better option quarterback than Shar. See him reading the offensive plays and interpreting the signal by looking at his bracelet there. He's got a bright play bracelet. That tells him what he wants to do and how to set the formation. This year, McDonald, completion-wise, 72%. Second down, eight. A little quicker on the option. He's out of Spring, Texas, and the sophomore picks up maybe another yard. It'll bring up third down. Kurt Douglas is over there to make the stop. McDonald started two games this year, and he came off the bench to pull out a victory against East Carolina. 
And when Shar hurt his thumb, he started in Tokyo. Then he was hurt, and then Wendell Lowry, a redshirt freshman, finished and hit five of six passes. It's two of them for touchdowns in the fourth quarter to beat Louisville. So they've used three quarterbacks, and all of them have had some good moments. Third down, seven. Broken up by the interior. That's Lewis. Mo Lewis is having a great game. Also, Goldberg was in his face, but it was Lewis who batted it down. And so McDonald's first activity comes to a grinding halt, and they're going to have to punt the football. Hawkins will come in and punt the football for Syracuse. standing inside the 10. Marshall goes back. Looks like they're going to come after him. Bad snap Bad over his head. And it's going to go out of the back of the end zone for a safety. The center on that is 51, Matt Greco. A linebacker. He would have needed a butterfly net to catch that one. Or be seven foot tall. You'll see the center right in the middle of the screen. He takes that snap and it, oh, over the top. And the punter, as you said, Gary, is six foot six. But there's no way he could have reached that one. You know, I've seen that happen in the National Football League, and I've seen it happen in, in, in college games. Nobody is immune to that play. Yep, that's right. Like Coach McPherson said, I hate coaching the unexpected. <laughs> and I would say he's had the unexpected today in the kicking game again. He's going to be talking shorthand on the sideline here pretty quick. <laughs> so now it's a 13-7 game in favor of Georgia. Boy, this has been a bizarre third quarter, hasn't it? It has. Started with a fumble, two interceptions, missed field goal, and now make it 12 to 7 and now a snap over the center picking up the two points to make it a 12 to 7 game. I think I said 13 but it's 12 7 a two point safety. Now they're going to give the punter I think the opportunity to just go ahead and punt the football. Georgia will have it probably pretty good field position. coaches right now, Dick, are saying, let's settle down. Let's get back to playing some good football. I don't think they're saying it quite as <laughs> cleanly and nicely and precisely as you're saying it. <laughs> now they have the option of punting or kicking off, and coming in will be Biscuit. He's going to kick it off. Yep. They must have a lot of confidence in kicking. Like, over the years, in my experience with this, I was always better on punting it because yep. we could get better hang time. I think I've seen anybody kick off in a long time after a yeah. second. That's what they're going to try to do here. Cleveland and Marshall are the twin men back for Georgia. He hit the ball pretty well. Yes, he did. Yeah. And Marshall has it inside the 20. Up to the 40 and to the 43 tackle there. Brian LeBaron was over there to make the stop for Syracuse. So Georgia not able to capitalize on two turnovers here in the third quarter. Still have Greg Talley at quarterback. Now the thing to do offensively, I think, is to come out and go back to the fundamental phase of your offense. The plays you run every year in every game, regardless of who you're playing. What well, we call the dirty dozen. Oh, they're coming with a reverse. They reverse to Marshall. Hello. He's to the 40 to the Syracuse 37. So Georgia now operating inside the Syracuse end of the field just at about the 38-yard line. An 18-yard gain on this reverse. There's two phases of this. First, the fake to the tailback that draws the defense in. Then the reverse phase coming around here as the quarterback comes off and just hands it to him. Back with it right after this play. Maxwell in motion. Hampton. Hampton.
distance seeking some yardage inside the 35 to the 34. Let's go back to that, Dick. Here we go. Take a look at it now. You're going to see the tailback fake inside. That draws the crowd. That draws the backers. Then the wide receiver coming around on the reverse. Good fake inside. Fullback is leading. See, there he goes. There, there it comes. Nice job. He's out there. He gets a block by the offensive tackle. Gets a block by the wide receiver. Good open field tackle right there by number 17, Greg Walker. And it was an 18-yard gain. Now the last play picked up four, second and six. Ellis, the fullback. You know, they started with Cleveland. We have not seen him since the first series of the game, and it's been Ellis, the fullback, well, Dan Boosie making the stop there. Well, Ellis had been hurt part of the year. You know, he had, uh, you know, most of the year, the season, he had a, a knee problem, and evidently he's a little healthier now with the, with the time off between the last game and this football game, and they're going to play the best fullback. Third down and a short four, almost five yards to go. I think he, too, uh, Gary, is also a little more physical blocker. Later, right there, he's in the tight end position. He splits the seam going down between the two deep safeties. They're playing uh, what we call a double zone. You see the one safety, Thompson coming over, Tim Santos coming over there. He gets right down in between. You can't allow the guy off the line of scrimmage that clean. 29 yard gain, first and goal inside the five. Tally on a roll. He overthrows Hummings, Sean Hummings. Hummings, by the way, just glad to be in this football game. He was in a car wreck this week, and the car flipped over three or four times, and it skinned all his knees, and uh, there was some concern whether he could even play. He did not start today, but as you can see, in the football game now. He Casey, said, I'm starting to be very grateful just to be around right yeah. now. Casey Barnum, the defensive lineman, was the driver of that car. He, he's already played in the game. They were very fortunate. Must have been wearing seat belts. Second and goal. Just inside the box. Valley rolling this time. Hampton touchdown, Georgia. to the right of your screen just going on a sprint out the wide receivers collapsed in toward the field to shorten the field there he is catching the ball giving a little straight arm right there to go on in here it is again see now the two wide receivers will come down inside and actually try to pick defenders there he is going out in the flat gets the football no defender covering him right there 17 Greg Walker tries to come over but it's a little too late you see that all around ability the ability to take it inside run outside and come out of the backfield and receive the football now, are they thinking about going for two? Well, let's see. The score right now at uh, 18, 18 to 7. seven. Might as well. So Georgia now, after not able to capitalize on two turnovers, have started to move, and they moved effectively, getting first the safety over the snap over the punter, and now marching four yards on a touchdown strike from Tally to Hampton. Six plays, 56 yards, and it took two minutes and 13 seconds. They, according to my stats, they haven't tried a two-point play this year. I have them zero for zero. That's kind of hard to believe. Yeah, it? it is. Maybe I've got a first mistake of my life. <laughs> Either that or your computer did. <laughs> I've got to believe it's a computer. It's not you. So they're going to go for two. I kind of believe now they'll come out here and have the option to run or throw. Tally, who was taken out on that first half, has now started to move this football team. He'll come out with two receivers put to the top of the field. One of those marshaled in motion. Same play, same play. Yes, it same. is, and this time the ball is not going to get in there. They ran the same play. Walker made the stop on Hampton and stopped him short of the goal line. They said it worked once, might as well try it again. Sometimes they do, but this time it didn't work. Taking a look now at the same play that they scored on. 
Cup. Hampton, number seven, works out underneath, but you'll see this time, number 17, Greg Walker, is sitting there. He didn't collapse in with the wide receiver running the slant. Good job, Greg Walker. Walker only weighs 179 pounds, but he wrestled down the 215-pound Hampton. Come back and make the same play for two, and it didn't work the second time. You know, I wonder if his mother's here. Didn't the coaches say that he always plays better when his mom's in the stands? She is here. They made sure of that. She's from Houston, <laughs> Texas. Kickoff now to Ishmael. And he started out again, and David Walker says, no, sir, you stay right there. So at the 20-yard line, Syracuse, who at halftime trail 10 to 7, now find themselves down 18 to 7, with 7.39 left in the third. The thing that makes this play go is Maxwell right here, the man in motion receiver, he comes in and he walls off. The wide receiver here coming in right now, and he tries to wall off, picking the man that's going to cover this back out of the backfield. I hope you can see that. Here's now, watch, they're going to try to shut the defense off inside. See, they're going to try to pick him in there. Maxwell, number four. Arthur Marshall, number 12. Did a good job. Tried it again, it didn't work. From the 20 now, Syracuse trying to, to get some rhythm back in this game. Mark McDonald still the quarterback as he gets off to Owens. Owens, he had a good, quick beat across the 25 to the 27. Then Smith rams him out there. You see the stutter step here. Oh, he has that ability to maintain balance, widen his base, lower his tail, and then dart to wherever he wants to go. Take a look at it, ladies and gentlemen. The tailback way deep. Here he is. He's following his bar. He gets the block right there. He picks that all. Now watch his feet. Boom, boom. Steps up, gets him over, over the top. That's what coaches refer to when they say this young man has good feet. You can't coach that, can you? No, it's born with Second down, a long three now for the Orangemen. Syracuse really struggling in the second half. They trail 18 to 7. McDonald in relief of Bill Shard, quarterback, and he gives off to Kenan, the fullback, and the early fullback's got a first down and just moves the pile as he comes across the 35 to the 37. It was an impressive effort that time. Matt McCormick eventually, along with some help, able to bulldog him down. Don't hear a lot about this guy, Kenan. He's out of Brooklyn. Jefferson High School, 6'1", 226. As we mentioned, he's played everywhere. The only thing he hasn't done is be the coach of this football team. And speaking of coaches, Dick McPherson trying to somehow find some magic in that piece of paper that'll get his offense going. First down. McDonald comes out of there somehow and scampers to the 45. And did you see the defensive lineman jump up in the air? See, he's operating on the line of scrimmage. When you operate on the line of scrimmage and try to pass, you have to have the defensive lineman down. You'll see the quarterback in this end zone shot. He makes a fake, pulls in there. Now you'll see Goldberg, number 95. See him get up there? Okay. And Mo Lewis, too. He couldn't throw over the top of him. We just told Dick that that safety a moment ago was the first in Peach Bowl history. Really? Yep. Attendance today, 44,911. Second down now, and still three yards to go. Owens comes in motion. McDonald tripped up. Excellent play that time by Goldberg. Bill Goldberg, kind of a free spirit on this team. In fact, he says, I've got a screw loose or two. But he has fun. Great copy out of Tulsa, Oklahoma. He's going to be coming from the right of our screen, number 95. You'll see him right at the right-hand corner of your screen, right in the middle. Defensive lineman. That's his 13th sack in his career right there. He's on his way to the Japan Bowl after this ball game. You know this guy. You think they're Tony Bruce in Japan? I don't know. He sails sailboats. Yeah. He also flies gliders, and he's been in the blimp. An adventuresome sort. Plus, he's a psychology major. <laughs> Third down and nine. Donald disappearing from sight, but he's got some running room now. And he's very first close, down. and I think he's got the first down to the 49. Well, that little pump fake helped him on the run, too. It did, but I, I was concerned in watching that that the defensive guy was coming up behind him was going to strip the ball, but he got the ball tucked away nicely. He gives you that dimension. When the protection breaks down, he can go ahead and scramble and get the first down. You'll see he's surrounded by the enemy, and this when he gets back, he's trying to stay in the pocket. Here comes Goldberg, 95. There's, he gets up inside now. He's, he gives a little pump fake, made him jump in. Did you see him jump? Ten-yard gain on the play, just short of the 50-yard line. Kirk Douglas, number 43, looked like a broad jumper, didn't he? Nice play action, fake this time by McDonald, throwing up the field, and that could be interference, is it? 
Didn't call it. Yep, they sure did. Yeah. Here it comes. Yeah. Carpenter interfered with by Chris Wilson. Late flag, but it looked to me like it had to be there. Yeah, it, it did look like it had to interfere. Here's an isolation now. They're working the ball to Rob Moore and or to Carpenter. 14 is Moore. Carpenter's on the outside of the left of your screen. They're working down its eye. Right, now Carpenter come, number seven coming inside. Here's here comes 16. Chris Wilson. Does he get there early? Oh yeah, he gets there no early. No question. No question. He gets there. He hooked him with his left arm. And he agrees. Yeah. In slow motion. 15 yard penalty, first down. At the 35-yard line now of George is where the ball rests. Sun shining now after a lot of rain this week. Turned out to be a beautiful day for football. A lot of cold this week, too. <laughs> yes, sir. So for the 35, first down, 4.53 left now in the third quarter. 18-7, Georgia leads Syracuse. Chris Gedney, the tight end in motion. Oops, a mix-up on this play as McDonald crashed into his own guy, gets it off to Owens. Oh, and that play just never did get underway. Boy, does that Benny Smith come up there and hit you? He's going to be a high draft choice. That safety, 5'11", 180 senior for, from Warner Robins, Georgia. He was a corner a year ago. They moved him to safety. You know, 10 interceptions. Now there's a flag on this play. You know, Smith is on his way to the Hula Bowl. That's a pretty good place to go when it's been cold down here in the South, huh? That's right. Taking a look at Ben Smith, the coaches told us yesterday, Richard Bell told us yesterday, he's the finest defensive back I've ever coached. That's quite a compliment. He gets there in a hurry, and he's always mad when he gets there. Well, they've had some good ones, too. I think about Terry Hogue, who played yeah. for Georgia. Still playing right now in Philadelphia. Yep. But well, they're sorting this one out, the penalty against Syracuse. There's your time, the vital statistics as Georgia trying to go 2-0 and in the Peach Bowl, winning the last time in 73. Holden, offense, repeat the first down. So the 10-yard penalty will back the orange back. This guy very respected the NFL ranks, an assistant with the Broncos and the Browns. Hired uh, at 50 years of age to take over the reins at Syracuse. He's done a great job. It's a well-disciplined, well-coached football team, and, and the program is that way. And it, it just perpetuates itself. You can see three penalties each. First down now, 20 yards to go for Syracuse. He's trying to set up the screen. He does to Owens. Owens in the open field. Look at this. 35-30. Remarkable run. And he's very close to the first down on a play that almost did not get executed because McDonald couldn't locate him. He got him eventually, and it goes a 20-yard game. The thing about this in the screen, here's your screen back, and he sets up and then works out over here, but the attention is on the quarterback as he gets back, and the rush just surrounds him. I don't know how he even got it off. Now watch him. He makes the fake. Now watch him slide to the screen. Now here comes Mo Lewis, and he still got that thing off. The offensive lineman did a good job. Flannery got down there, number 53. You can see how elusive he is once he clears that line of scrimmage. That's McDonald's first completion of the day. It goes for 20 yards, and what a run by Michael Owens to the 25-yard line. McDonald throwing, and they're going to stop this one. That's the first time I've seen Michael Owens split out as a wide receiver. Delay a game. Pin ball, delay, offense, repeat first down. So after all of that, trying to get back to a huddle and get a play call, they don't do that, and they lose five yards. I wonder with Michael Owens, you know, coming out of Carlisle High School, and then his brother being the most highly recruited basketball player in the country coming out of there before them. Are there any of those guys left up there? <laughs> Billy Owens is playing on the top-ranked basketball team of the country, Syracuse. He was quite a basketball player as well. Yeah. He played uh, with Jeff Lebo. They were guards opposite each other in Carlisle. Two state championship basketball teams. Jeff Lebo, of course, playing for Dean Smith of North Carolina. First and 15. 
McDonald on the option to the short side of the field, and they just jam that one up. Good defense. They're playing real well over there now in that defense. They see they didn't allow him to turn up, and they just kept pushing him to the finest tackler on the field, the sideline. Casey Barnum was over there to help with that. They're going to lose a couple of yards on that one. A lot of young kids on that defense playing right now and learning what it's all about. We mentioned they're playing eight true freshmen on their top 22 defenders. And that bodes well for the future, but it's been a long struggle this year for Georgia at times. Well, not only the learning part, but they're just not physically as strong as a 50-year senior offensive lineman. Good point. Second down now. 17 yards to go. They lost two. McDonald optioning this way. Wants to throw. Gets rid of it. Complete. That's Carpenter, and he's he got it. a first down, and he pay for that one. Was that a good job? Ben Smith hit him, and Carpenter, with great concentration, hangs on to the football. 17-yard gain. As you take a look at this from the end zone, you'll see the play-action fake. He goes down the line of scrimmage. No one there, so he bounces back. He fires it down the hole <laughs> right in the zone. And, ooh, good contact again by Ben Smith, number 26. Some hit. Now, they're going to measure. From our vantage point, it looked like he had the first down inside the 15. Norman Cowens is sh shook up a little bit, number 59. He was injured in 1987 and missed most of the year. In fact, he uh, received another year of eligibility because of that injury. I don't think it's serious now. It is a first down. Carpenter showed me something on that. As Cowens now going off out of Douglasville, Georgia. He started nine and... The motto felled him for a couple of ball games. They say his strength isn't completely back. So for the 15-yard line, first down. And Syracuse with McDonald kind of scrambling around, buying additional time, showing good poise. They kept it moving. He's changed the tempo of their offense. First down for the 15. Owens. For a couple. Mike Jones, a really? true freshman, coming up from the strong safety spot, was there first. Mike Jones at 6'3", 195 pounds. As you said, Gary, a freshman, was looking right down the throat of a great big 6'3", 303-pound offensive guard that was coming out there to block, and, and he dodged him. He good move, smart young freshman. <laughs> and I don't want any piece of you, big guy. Gain of two, second and eight. Eighteen to seven, Georgia with the lead. This oh, handle snap. Did McDonald get on it? McDonald, I think, recovered his own mishandled snap from center John Flannery. Most of the time when that happens, it's the quarterback's fault. He gets a little anxious and he pulls out early, leaving the center. Let's see if we can take a look on a close-up here. To the right of your screen, you'll see the center up underneath. Quarterback, rather, up underneath the center. It's hard to tell from that shot. Every once in a while, the center drops his tail too soon and pushes the ball away from the quarterback's hands. Ten play drive thus far. It's now third down and nine. There's more broken up. Good defense by George Wynn. Yeah, George Wynn was underneath it. Looked like they had him doubled up some way over there. They've really shut Rob Moore down. They've done a great job. So Biscop, who has missed one from 27 yards, will come in and attempt this field goal. It's going to be about 32 yards away. Moore, by the way, has only one catch today, Dick, for 22 yards. If they don't get the ball in his hands, it's hard for him to score enough points to win regardless of the play. From 32 yards away, here's Biscop. The kick is up, and the kick is good. So Syracuse scores their first points of the second half. 144 left to be played in this third quarter. 18-10 in favor of the Dogs. Two for 37 yards and also rushed for 10. And showing a lot of courage and mobility as he's had to run around back there, setting up a screen, buying time on an option. And now Syracuse will be kicking off. who is now one of two on the field goal department. 32-yarder successful. He missed a 27-yarder back in the second quarter. Marshall and McCoy back deep. This time it's going to be McCoy.
McCoy. Rodney McCoy. He has real speed. And he'll bring it out across the 25 to the 26. He had a 73-yard touchdown catch this year against Temple. It's the only time he caught the ball. Matt Greco. It's the only catch in the year. Might as well make it a good one. Huh? That's right. A memorable one. Yeah. Greco, the guy who snapped the ball over the punter's head earlier, was down on special teams to make the stop for Syracuse. Georgia by eight. 138 left in the third quarter. Tally is the quarterback. This is another reverse. reverse. Nope. nope. Hampton's going to keep it. And Hampton almost for nine yards as he's across the 35 to the 36. Bavaro made the tackle. What that fake reverse does is it slows the inside out of the pursuit. As they're chasing, they see the eye toss play going outside. They see the reverse fake that slows the that slows the defense as you watch this from the end zone. Now, note, follow the linebackers, not the ball carrier. Now, watch them stop there, see? That slowed him down, and that gives him that running lane right there. Hampton now, 30 yards on 12 carries. A gain of nine, second of the yard. Here's Hampton again, and Hampton has the first down. Outstanding defensive play there by, I think it was Terry Wooden, number 90. Boy, exactly who it is. Boy, that was good defensive football play. Huh? He's That's the out. most talented linebacker in the Dick McPherson career or era at Syracuse. He's one of the most talented in the country. Now, you're going to see the ball toss. Now, keep your attention on the left side of the screen, left corner. You'll see him right there. See, he took the blocker and threw him back into the backfield and got back in there to make the play. Good job, Terry Wooden. But it was still a first down for the Dogs as they have it now to 37. 45 seconds left in the third quarter. Marshall comes in motion. off and he'll lose some yardage back to the 35 Rob Burnett was there first the 265 pounder also Alvin Brown both there and Tally loses yardage Alvin Brown did a nice job actually he caused the whole th the pile up right there you know Alvin Brown boxed in the New York kid gloves and actually won the competition in 1981 very very strong they, <laughs> they talk about how strong Alvin Brown is 34 he comes out of the game right now well he's not a cover guy he's a physical guy he, wanna, he wants to fight in the pits and we're going to conclude this third quarter they will not take another snap so we played three here at the 22nd Peach Bowl Classic 18 to 10 in favor of Georgia we'll return with more action for the Peach Bowl after this message and a word from our ABC stations from the 35 as we start this fourth quarter, the ball is fumbled, and inside the 30, the scramble going on. Who's got it? Hampton was the guy who had the ball momentarily as it was jarred loose, and looks like Kurt Moll, number 50, recovered it for the Bulldogs. All their veteran up front, the senior, there he is, second team all SEC pick. The starter of the last two years for the Bulldogs. So they lose some more yardage, Joe, all the way back to the 30. He's one of the few seniors. He's on his way to the senior bowl this year. Third down now, and 18 yards to go. Hampton goes in motion. Tally's going to take off. And he's hit hard at the 40. Good open field tackle. Dan Busey. That's Busey, yeah. Yeah, nice tackle by Dan. Look back now through three quarters of play statistically in this game. A lot of turnovers in the game. As we started the second half, that was all we had early. We had three very early in the game. Here we are. Of course, the score, Syracuse 10, Georgia 18. As we look down, Syracuse still in total rushing yards there further along than Georgia. And we actually anticipated Georgia really dominating yep. in the running game. Boy, Syracuse, four turnovers there. From the 40-yard line now. On fourth and eight, the snap comes back to Hester, and Hester hits a very beautiful punt. Yeah. This is Walker, and he lets it hit. And George is going to down this one at the five. Beautiful punt, 54 yards by Hester. Byron Gant was down there to get on it. And Syracuse will start from their own six-yard line. Finally, this is a minivan for kids with parents. And let's face it, we all have them. Yeah. The all-new Oldsmobile silhouette. Talking radical concept here. Your own window seat. Room for lots of things. And neat stuff to keep your parents from bugging you on long trips. Besides, silhouette makes them look cool. Right. Yeah. Ready, dude? 
and they need all the help they can get. Yeah. This is the new generation of wolves. Ladies and gentlemen, I wish my old partner was here tonight because this used to be our song. In the movies, happy endings are easy, but in the real world, they take solid planning. So for investment advice, peace of mind, even buying or selling a home, come to the companies of the Prudential and build your future on the rock. Number two, Miami takes their shot for the national championship when they meet SEC champ Alabama. The USF&G Sugar Bowl, New Year's night on ABC. Syracuse, eight points down, starting from their own six-yard line. Just underway, fourth quarter, 13-25 left in it. gives to Kennan, and Kennan hangs on this time after fumbling earlier in this third quarter of play. He takes it close to the 10. Chris Wilson there to make the stop. One of the big stories thus far, Dick Vermeule, is how they've held Rob Moore to one catch in the game. You know, I'm, I've said up here, and I've seen a lot of football, but I haven't seen them do anything, anything drastically with their coverage. He's been unstoppable all year long. One catch for 22 yards today. He's had a ratio of one touchdown catch every fifth reception. That's outstanding. Second down now, seven. A long six. Let's make it. He's singled up out there right now, getting the ball. McDonald is going to him as we speak. Moore catches it. Yep. And that may get him started. Out across the 26th first down, George Wynn defending for Georgia. See, if they set him to the wide field like this, they, see here, there he is, strictly one-on-one -on -one coverage there with George Wynn, number 22. George Wynn's 5'8", 170 pounds were Rob Moore, 6'2", 201, and can jump like a deer. Play action pass to freeze the people underneath. See, good fakes in there. Now there's nobody underneath between the quarterback and the receiver. Good job. 16-yard gain out to the 26-yard line. McDonald now maybe changing the play. First down for the Orange. There's a little uh, sprint draw handoff to Owens, and look at him, 40, 45, 50. Look at his speed. He's all the way to the 32-yard line of Georgia before Ben Smith caught him. Boy, is that Ben Smith valuable? Without that tackle, I think you have him. He's gone. This is a draw play now. It's just an eye draw where he's going to set one way. Tailback now, number 44, draw, offensive lineman setting pass protection. He takes it up there, good lead block by McKinnon, 43. Now it's just speed down the sideline, getting a lead block by Moore, number 14. Good job, well executed draw play. Boy, he just turns on the Jets, doesn't he? When he gets open field, everyone seems to be paralyzed by speed. That's a 38-yard gain, just short of the 35-yard line of Georgia. Remember now, if they would score a touchdown here, they could go for two and tie this game up. Chambers now has checked in a tailback. Give to Kennan instead, the fullback. And Kennan, who seems to always move that pile forward, gets to the 31. He does Lewis do on that. the stop. Chris Chambers did a pretty good job of blocking over there. He's from Ambridge, Pennsylvania, born in Swickley, Pennsylvania. You know who else was born in Swickley, Pennsylvania? I give up. Chuck Knox. Isn't he from Swickley, Pennsylvania? <laughs> Don't look at me. I know he's coaching for Bill Seattle. Bill Friel, our spotter, says that. I'm All right, sure well, it's right then. Second down and six. Boy, there's some information I needed badly. <laughs> <laughs> Moore and Carpenter split out. He's the tight end in motion. McDonald throwing to Carpenter, and Carpenter's got another first down to the 22. See, that's that play-action pass, and it puts the corner that's rolled up there in a, in a bind between coming up and taking the option pitch man or covering. See, they'll, they're going to fake it inside, fake the trap pass, now fake the option, now just throw it right out there, and he hit the seam. There was a defender in front of him coming up to stop the option. McDonald's kind of a tough guy, isn't he? He just oh, kind he of scraps and scrapes You can see him right there. See, the defender was the linebacker out there on him, and he just worked right in behind him and got in that little seam. They're slow in moving the sticks. It is a first down, and the line of scrimmage to 22. There's Carpenter's numbers. Carpenter had 41 catches coming into this game. For a high school quarterback, that's pretty good. He's, yep. he's used to being on the other end of it. Kennan and Shavers now in the backfield. Going end, end over now, on down his line. They're getting along with the D's in motion to the near side. McDonald getting ahead 
McKinnon, and Kennan inside the 20 to the 18, and Tory Evans, another one of those true freshmen who is out of Atlanta making the stop. You're going to play Evans a lot. Those true freshmen who is out of Atlanta making the stop. You're going to play Evans a lot. They like him. They like to have redshirted him as they would have other players, but forced into playing a lot of those first-year guys. And so inside the 20 to the 19, it brings up second down and seven. You were talking about Torrey Evans. He was also a pretty darn good high school fullback, running for over 405 yards, as well as making 171 tackles. Owens is back in now at the tailback spot. Three wideouts. The blitz may be coming. Sure looks like it. Yeah, they're coming. Both guys outside. McDonald, and it's complete to Moore. Moore breaks the tackle. He takes it in. Touchdown. situation right now it, then they're going to bring these two guys on the rush that gives him the one-on-one -on -one situation he gets the ball out there nicely here we go see this singled up now that you couldn't ask for a better situation he gets it now you have the little guy Chris Wilson trying to tackle the big guy that's tough that's why they call those corners the mighty mites that's what concerned George is they're two five eight corners trying to stay with those big wide receivers did you notice Rob Moore used the straight arm yep so here they go for two and they go for the tie and Kennan in the backfield. 10 away left in the game. McDonald rolling away for some pressure, throwing back, and Dees can't get there. Mo Lewis was the guy putting the heat on McDonald, and just enough heat that they didn't have enough time to connect with Andrew Dees, the six foot six tight end. Here's the look now. You're going to see the tight end is going to be coming across. He creates flow in the right direction and then comes back across the grain with this tight end. A little too much heat. Now here's McPherson's reaction. Oh, he says, oh, heck. I bet you he said, oh, heck. Huh? Well, earlier, Georgia went for two and didn't get it. And now McPherson did not as well. It's a two-point game. It took 2,000 years, but a revolutionary discovery is changing the way men think about coloring their gray hair. It's called Just for Men, from the leader in men's hair coloring. Simply apply Just for Men, and in five minutes, shampoo out. Your gray is blended away, leaving your natural-looking color. Five minutes. Here, look at me. Just for Men leaves your hair looking healthy and fuller, and it won't fade or wash out. Just for Men, in the men's hair care section. You want a deal? Well, here comes the deal. Now get low 4.8 APR financing for up to 48 months on all new Cutlass Supremes. This deal is not just another deal. It's Oldsmobile's new generation celebration. We've made it possible for our dealers to pass along millions of dollars to their customers on all other models. Hurry, these deals won't last forever. This is a deal on the new generation. Well, they were able to awake this guy, Rob Moore. He had one catch prior to this last drive. He caught two for 35, including the touchdown catch of 19 yards. His 10th touchdown catch of the season. And now on this kickoff, Georgia has Rodney Hampton back. So they have Marshall and Hampton back to receive the kickoff. Well, he's no stranger being back there. He's done it in his career before. And it's going to be Hampton. He waits at the 10. to the 40 and knocked down at the 15. You can see why they've got him back there. In high school, he had 11 kickoff returns and averaged 45 yards a return, Gary. That isn't too bad. Normally, when you get a long kickoff return, the coverage people overrun 
the return. They get beyond him, let him get up in between him. Right here, he gets the block, get walled off. A poor tackle right there. Gets a little screen block right there. Now it's just straight speed. The defense had constricted too much on that coverage. 40-yard kickoff return. They don't want him back there because he's had those bad knees, but they need him in a desperate situation, and he doesn't. Valley back Wooden. and he's going to be tackled by Wooden for a loss. That's his second sack today. His 25th sack on his career. He's, hey, you know something? I want to be his agent. Huh? <laughs> Call his mom. <laughs> I'll represent you. I'll get you $1. two eighty. Boy, he just rarely gets knocked down. He's always staying on his feet. He's just so tenacious, and it pays off there. A two-yard loss. Second down now, 12 yards to go. Norm Gerber, the defensive coordinator, can, considers him the best outside linebacker to ever play at Syracuse. Valley giving off to Hampton. Hampton after the 40-yard kickoff. Now... Brings it to close to the 45 of Syracuse. It'll ring up third down, still five. You know, the other thing I really believed in as, as a coach, Gary, is when you get into these tight situations and, and the score is tight and you're running out, out of time, you don't think about so much what play you run. You think about the individual you give the ball to. Give the ball to your best football player. Let him make you look smart as a coach. Go with who's hot, huh? Go with him. Let him run. Third down and a long five now. Hampton comes in motion. Tally, quarterback draw, and it didn't work. It did not work, and it's fourth down. They tried to cross him up, and Burnett had nothing to do with it. I think DeRiggi was in on that same thing. Yeah, the nose guard, Frank De Fred DeRiggi, number 67. Boy, does he ever look like a nose guard? I saw him the other day when he was honored as a, a fine student athlete at the banquet. Here's the nose guard right in the middle of your screen, number 67. He takes a slant move. Now he works back and constricts it and moves it back over so Burnett can make the play. But Fred DeRiggi, without a helmet on, he looks like a nose guard. <laughs> you, you, wouldn't, you would take one guess and you'd say, you're a nose guard. <laughs> Hester now to punt inside the 40. Ooh, this beauty. Is very high. And again, Walker fakes the fair catch, and the ball hits at the one, and it's going to be down there. Beautiful job. Forty-two yarders, but beautifully placed that time. Last time, he put it out at the six. Now at the one, Michael Wallace, who snapped the ball, was down there covering. Gary, what's remarkable about Hester coming into this ball game for the year, he had 18 punts dropped inside the 20-yard line. That's outstanding. 18 out of 20 dropped inside the 20. That's an outstanding job. There's a flag, Dick, way out here at the 37-yard line. What are they playing? Drop the hanky or what? I did not see it. Let's see what it's all about. Bill Friel's telling us they called holding. Bill, you've been known to make a mistake before. You know? <laughs> well, let's see what happens here. I don't think the officials are sure right now. Go out there, coach. You know, I, I see Goff as a young football coach, very intense on the sideline and yelling. It reminds me of a story on myself. I'm on the sideline one time, and I'm chewing out this official up one side down the other about the penalty he called. The penalty was on the other team. I thought he called it on us. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got in practice for the next bad call. You talk about being embarrassed. I had to take everything I said back. <laughs> You know, if it was a defensive holding, it would be an automatic first down. Yeah, yeah. But we've had no preliminary signal that I've been aware of. In fact, the penalty, I don't think anybody knew about it until a long time. Let's listen now. The enforcement is post scrimmage kick enforcement, half a distance from the end of the kick. First down, White. Did you? I, I'm not from the South. I'm not sure I totally understood what he said. <laughs> All I know is half the distance to the goal. And Ray Goff isn't even understanding it, and he's a native of Georgia. Look at him. Give it to him, Ray. For your first season of coaching. Dick McPherson understands it. Look at his hair. He understood the whole thing. All right. But the ball's still at the one-yard line. It's half the distance, so it had to be, it had to be against uh, Syracuse. So it's a half-yard line is where it yeah. is. gets maybe a yard, too, as he tries to get some operating room. 7.51 left. 
It's an 18 to 16 game in favor of Georgia. You might Randy as well, Wolford made the stop. You might as well give the pressure of this play to John Flannery, the big 291 pound center, number 53, and Blake Bernard's number 79, the big 300 pound right guard. Let those guys go out there and root hog and see if you can get them a couple yards. They think Flannery's the finest center they've had at Syracuse. He's got another year out of Pottsville, Pennsylvania. And Pottsville, Pennsylvania's turned out a few good ones. Second down, still nine. Very noisy at that part of the field. McDonald gives up, and this is Mc... there Wayne Kennan across the five to the six-yard line, so it's a third down coming up and still about six to go. You know, you may be wondering why they're not giving the ball to Michael Owens in this situation. You know, the last game I watched him play the whole ball game, and he lost the ball about four or five times within the ball game against West Virginia. They punched it out of there a couple yeah, of times. Yeah, they may be a little concerned about his securing the ball properly in this area. Or they may do it here, though. Or will they go to the air? Third down. Five yards to go. Go ahead and throw it. You're able to get some man-to-man -man coverage. McDonald's sprinting out. Throwing and more and that's just call. enough for the first down. Moore knew exactly where he had to go to get the first down, and he calmly made the catch. Good call by the offensive coordinator, George DeLone. He knew he'd get that tight coverage down there, or at least he felt he would to get the man-to-man -man situation. Now you'll see just going to run the quick out for the first down. See, they're backing off. They're playing him outside. They're playing him inside, but not playing him short. Well, that's digging out of a hole, isn't it? At the mm -hmm. half-yard line now, first down at the 11th. Well, that last drive they had was a very long one. From I mean, the six. six-yard line. Remember, Coach Mack said he wanted his team to be like a machine. <laughs> well, it's a well-oiled one right now. Donald giving out to Owens, and Owens skips out to the 15-yard line. Gain of four. It'll bring up second down and six. Kurt Douglas again on the stop. The two Douglases, by the way, mid, the middle linebackers are not related. Demetrius and Kurt playing a lot of that inside linebacker spot. And so now Syracuse with a second down and six. And both of those Douglases are totally different in the style of play. Demetrius Douglas is a flow linebacker. Kurt Douglas, not the movie actor, is a plugger. He likes to go up and attack the inside. We'll stick it. There it is, 113 yards for Owens. By McDonald, and the catch is made. It's going to be short of the first down. Is having a tough time was Kennan with the footing. He falls a yard short of the first down, just across the 20. So it'll be a third down coming up. Kennan, a very good receiver. As we mentioned again, the first Syracuse running back to catch over 30 balls. He had 39 coming into the game. Third down, less than a yard. T. Don't see that much anymore, do you? Nope. See a wishbone look, but you don't see the full house tee. And Dr. Walker, and he's not going to get it. No way. David Walker, the backup fullback who goes in there on the full house tee, did not get an inch. I'm not sure who it was, but it looked like Matt McCormick, 49, or somebody, an inside linebacker, scraped off and hit him in the back. I'm not too sure, but there was definitely penetration at the point of attack. Taking a look at it here. They're coming off the ball, three backs in the back. Yes, no, it was 26, safety blitz. Benny Smith, the guy in there. Oh, he took two guys on. Boy, he's tough. Hawkins will punt the football. McPherson's team down by two as Marshall will go back to field it. Six foot six, Ken Hawkins. Big rush, and he hit it. Lazy spiral. Marshall will fair catch it just inside the 45-yard line of Georgia. 37-yard punt. The Dogs of Georgia lead by two, 4-10 left to play. Announcing a new generation of owner satisfaction. So now Georgia with a two-point lead starts this drive from their own 44-yard line. Marshall goes in motion. Tally the quarterback. Gives to Alfonso Ellis for a yard, and let's go down now to Cheryl Miller. I'm not important here. 
Thank you, Gary, with a very special guest of honor is Brenda Lifelighter, who was a 1989 Miss Peach Bowl. And Brenda, this is a very special time for you. Not only was this your first pageant, but you won it. Well, Cheryl, it was a whole lot of fun. I did have a great time with the pageant. It was the first pageant I ever entered, and, uh, and I'm real lucky to come out with a win on the first time, but it was a great, great time for me. Well, Brenda, what are some of the benefits of being Miss Peach Bowl? Well, as the Miss Peach Bowl queen, not only do I have a whole lot of fun with the game and all the activities leading up to the actual Peach Bowl game, but they were very generous and awarded me a really nice cash scholarship. So I'll be using that next year when I um, start taking classes here. All right, Brenda, congratulations on your lovely winner. Let's go back to you, Gary. Thank you, ladies. By the way, the timeout called by Syracuse, stopping the clock. They have two timeouts left. Georgia has all three of theirs. So it's going to be second down and eight for the Dogs. 4-0-3 left in this game. It was 7-7 after one quarter at halftime. Georgia led 10-7. Then they marched to an 18-7 lead. It was cut to 18-10. After scoring, Syracuse tried to tie it up, going for two and missed. And that's where we are now. Tally fake, and it didn't pull Wooden, did it? Good discipline. Stayed backside there, right where he belonged. And he got deeper than the ball. The only way he could go was back up underneath him. He did a good job. This guy's something. He yeah, is a really player. a good football You'll player. You'll see him to the right-hand side of your screen, number 90. Action will go away from him. He'll work upfield. See, now, now work upfield. He's under control. He's eyeballing it. There he is. Keeps his base pretty good. Does a nice job of playing defensive left outside linebacker. You know, right now with the score, 18-16, and you look at the turnover category, Syracuse is minus three in this ballgame, and the Bud Goody NFL computer computes a turnover to be worth three and a half points. So right there, they're giving away almost 13 points. Syracuse has asked for another timeout. They have one remaining. So it'll be third down and 12 for Georgia when we resume play. So the Orangemen, when they get the football, will have one timeout if, in fact, they can get the football back. They can get her back. If Georgia wins here today, it would give them seven wins. And that's one of the things Ray Goff was talking about. He said, we want to avoid the first non-winning season since 79, meaning that Georgia's won seven or more games every year of the 80s. You know, plus Georgia's been the only team in the 80s in the SEC. It's been in a bowl game every year. Louisville defeating Kentucky. And uh, Michigan beating up on Eastern Michigan, the defending NCAA champs. Third down now, 12. Tally's got pressure coming. It's Wooden again. He absolutely is single-handedly stopping Georgia right now. Well, the coverage took the pattern away downfield, and Tally is not going to throw an interception right now, so he hangs on the ball. Now, the only advantage of, of a sack over a quarterback hurry, the advantage is you got him down, but sometimes you, th you give him the hurry, he'll throw the interception downfield. This time, he's not going to throw it. He's going to take the sack. Wooden got there quickly. 3.46 left to go. George is going to have to punt the football when we come back. I just did something incredible. Syracuse used their final timeout, which in some ways is kind of surprising. You'd think they would save one of those, so if they got within field goal range, they'd have that timeout. Well, that's the normal procedure. You would save that for the field goal situation to get the squad on, say, like nine, ten seconds left to go, and the clock's running. Now, Hester, after punting the ball beautifully the two previous times, does not hit this one well at all. It's only a 33-yard punt. Hester actually has been one of the most valuable players here in the second half with a couple of those great punts. You see the timeouts left. Now, the Orangemen have no timeouts left, and they're at the 27-yard line. They can win it with a field goal. Three minutes and 37 seconds left. You know the advantage of the college ball, though, if you make a first down, the clock changes, I mean, stops as it moves the change. That's one advantage. But they have none left. And here comes sing. Moore, split to the near side. They better not single up Moore. He's singled up right now. That's exactly right. Wilson's picked him up, and now they got Carpenter in motion. The blitz coming. They throw it complete to Kennan. Kennan to the 30. Kennan will get out of bounds and stop the clock at the 35 and picks up eight yards on the play. I can't believe that. 
They lined up out that time with single coverage on Robert Moore, number 14. He's the country's leading receiver in terms of yardage per catch. Touchdown ratio of one every five. They double that guy. <laughs> I tell you what, Chris Wilson must have felt awfully lonely out there. <laughs> I tell you, I would have. If they give you that look, you got to go back and test them. I know what. Well, see, they probably won't give them the same look two times in a row. Second down, a gain of eight on that last play. Second and two. Cannon tried to get the first down, and he's got it. I think he got it. To the 38. Let's go down now to Cheryl Miller. Gary, a player who has been playing extremely well for Georgia is number seven, Rodney Hampton. And with me is the proud mother, Eva Hampton. And you must be very pleased at how well your son has been playing. I am. I'm very pleased by them. Very now, we were giving Coach Goff a hard time yesterday in the meeting. He said every time that you have been at Rodney's game, he has played extremely well. You're as good luck to him. Well, he has. He has. And I hope I could come to more of them. Well, I'm sure Coach <laughs> Goff is going to make sure you do. Let's go back to you, Gary. <laughs> Uh, she'll be a fixture if they win again today. <laughs> They're measuring. It is a first down. You know, so many times in coaching, I've recognized the motivation and the leadership given to an athlete came from mom, yeah. not the big old tough dad. Really? Yeah. yeah, I agree with that. There's Rodney. The offspring, and Rodney with a touchdown catch today of four yards. First down for Syracuse from their own 38. 3.08 left in the game. Orange been down by two. It's not a lot of time. Throws. Completes it to Owens, and he'll get out of bounds. Stop the clock. And they pick up another seven yards. Cowens ran him out there. So they're doing a good job, Dick, right now of getting the clock stopped and picking up some yardage at the same time of six, seven yards at a crack. Well, again, I've had the opportunity to watch one game on tape when they were in the similar situation prior to the first half against West Virginia, and they showed tremendous poise and very good coaching. They knew exactly what they were going to do on every snap, made no mistakes, got it down there and got the touchdown in a very similar situation. Of course, again, it was before the half. 55 yards away now, second down and three. McDonald, pressure coming from both sides, running around for his life, loses Yardy. All the way back to the 40. Mo Lewis was there first, but both linebackers were coming, this guy along with Callens, and they were pinching in. You know, the other thing you got to remember, they don't need a touchdown. All they have to do is get the ball down in there within that 40-yard range for the field goal. Now they've got a third and eight after the loss. Clock running, 2.30. searching. Double pumps. He's going to get out of bounds. Stops the clock as he scrambles forward, but it's going to be fourth down as he goes out of bounds at the 43. They're still five yards short of the first down. Coverage did a good job that time of just sagging off, not giving him anything, just trying to keep the ball in front of him. I don't think they even cared if they made the first down. Rob Moore was up here, number 14. You see, you've got him playing zone. A man outside, playing inside. You notice there at that time when he broke inside, George Wynn, number 22, the corner, was just signaling, you take him. He's not mine any longer. He's going into the zone. This is Goldberg shaking up on the play. Their big all-Southeastern Conference defensive tackle. He holds the school record for the number of tackles made by an interior lineman at 121 coming into this game. He broke his own record. He's a tough guy. He'll come out of the game now, and with... 220, Syracuse with a fourth down and five yards to go. George Brewer comes in replacing Goldberg. Still a lot of time left. But they're going for it. They're going to try to work the ball in the middle to Gidney. There he is. He Donald looping it up to Owens. He's got it. And Owens has got the first down inside the field. Was that a nice head jump job by McDonald? Wow, you talk about touch. You and talk about boys. you talk about pressure. Fourth down situation. He gets real pass rush pressure coming from the outside. Here is he wants to sit up. Bednar 79 do a good job. There's the heat coming both outside there. Now he lays it up in a scramble situation. He was going to the sideline. He saw the quarterback start to scramble. He worked up the sideline. Mark got in the ball. 28-yard gain to the 28. Quarterback draw. McDonald, 20. And he slides to the 15. Another first down. 
Chris Wilson on this shot. It's a 32-yard field goal right now. Still 150. They stop the clock to move the sticks. The line of scrimmage the 15-yard line. Again, Syracuse has no timeouts. They're down by two. As you know, Biscuit, in the estimation of McPherson, has been an adventure this year, so they're still thinking six points. Well, he missed the one earlier, but he was 10 for 12 inside the 40 coming into this ball. Game. There's Kennan, and Kennan chugs to the 10. Gain of five. That was a great call on the draw play, anticipating a good heavy rush. The rush was coming from the outside. George Malone, the offensive coordinator, made a good call. The line of scrimmage. Just inside the 10. Second down, four. 108 left in the game. Hand off to Kennan again. Nothing this time. Maybe a yard at most. Keep the ball in the middle field, guys. Yep, Kurt Douglas okay. there. When you get that exaggerated, when you get that close to the goal line, even though that, you know, that goal post right there, you get moved further to the right. The angle for the side winder kicker is just greater. And now with 46 seconds. McDonald had come clear to the near side to get a play. Dick, I remember doing a playoff game here when you were coaching the Eagles, and your field goal kicker missed one going this way. They could have won post. it. Damon yep. Bennett's team beat us in the playoff first wild card game, 1978. McDonald's yeah, just going to throw that one out of bounds and yeah. stop the clock. Yeah, they wasted a lot of time there. They sure did. They See, were indecisive. They got, they got the ball over there, out there on the far right hash mark. How far is this kick now, Gary? Have you computed that 17, 27-yard field goal? This is going to be closer to a 30. Let's see where they spot it. Biscop is coming in. Thus far, he missed one from 27. Connected from 32 yards away. As I said, coming into the ball game, he was 10 for 12 inside 40. He was 14 for 18 on the year. Wow. He had something like that. Replaced the long line of outstanding field goal kickers. He was the guy that had the string broken of 262 consecutive PATs. This is an NCAA record. But he'd only missed four field goals in the regular season. He's one for two today, and this is for the ball game. You know, for a sidewinder kicker, kicking with his right leg, kicking from the right hash like there, it's a little easier for him, and I think he can pull that back over. So it will be about a 27-yarder, as you had anticipated. 27 yards away. 29 seconds left. Lannery to snap, McDonald to hold. I've been in this situation and saw my holder drop the ball one game. So who we got? This may be closer to 26. It's in between 26 and 27 yards away. The kick is on the way, and the kick is good, and Syracuse has the lead. to coach the unexpected and that was his kicking game but he got what he wanted there and there is Ray Goff Goff. trying to wish that one outside the upright coach Goff it's a hard way to make a buck <laughs> 19 to 18 is the count 25 seconds left now you know go it's going to go to back it'll be Hampton returning this kickoff also going back to that two point attempt yeah, I we need to figure out why they did it. I know it. There was an 18 to 7 game, and they went for two, didn't get it. And at the time, you and I were looking at each other. We talked to our statistician George Hill, and we never did get an explanation what their thinking was. Looks awfully big now, doesn't it? It sure do. They have Hampton back there now. Yeah, yeah. Hampton and Marshall, both of them have kick it on the ground. Return guys. They ought to kick it on the ground. I wouldn't kick it off. I'd kick it low. Let it square, but even if given a little field position, there's only 25 seconds left. The 
Syracuse, who trailed 18 to 7, cut it to 18 to 10, went for two after getting it to 18 16, and now with a field goal by this guy, have a one point lead. And he's kicking it very short. Up man's got it. And uh, Georgia will have the ball at about the 45. They have all three timeouts. Oh, two, two left. Timeouts. Two left. Two left, just across the 45. All right, because Jeff Finch was a short man who fielded that. This isn't over yet. 21 Casey's seconds. field goal, Gary, was 53 yards in his career. 53-yarder, he has kicked. So they've got to get the ball down here to about the 35-yard line. Is there a wind in the stadium? Pretty negligible. Casey has made two in this one. Back to throw now is Talley trying to do it. A flag as he throws it. Incomplete, but a penalty flag. Might have been offside on uh, Syracuse. Darlin Hawkins, a freshman, was the guy putting the pressure that time on Greg Talley. It's against Georgia. Holding. Boy, that hurts. McPherson said, we want this game bad. We want to be 8-4. Eight eight and and four. Four. And <laughs> He right did now, not like that 7-4. and four. No, he said that we beat the teams we're supposed to beat, but we didn't win some of the games I thought we should have won. Yeah. Boy, you look at his football team. He has only two seniors on the offensive 11. Illegal procedure, offense, six men on the line. Repeat, first down. Big thanks to George Hill, our statistician, our spotter, Bill Frio. Very good job, guys. This has been a very entertaining game, Dick. It, it, it has been. You know, the third quarter got sloppy. Yep. And then it cleaned up again, got smooth, and became an exciting football game. 16 seconds now. They have four wideouts. Back to throw is Tally, and he's hit. And the ball comes loose. Incomplete. And that's Burnett that unloaded on him. Boy, he was really coming. He is fired up. Stops the clock with 11 seconds to go. He's coming from the right side of your screen. Number seven. You see him right there on the guard? Pay Sadler, number 78, set a little too short on him. He gave him a little head move. Swim, and outside he went. Boy, Tally really took a shot. Rodney Hampton now comes into the backfield. Well, we're going to have a Hail Mary coming up here now, possibly. Second down, 15. And 11 seconds left. Well, they come out into a pretty ordinary set. Just two wideouts. Tally back to throw. Throwing up the middle. Incomplete. Intended for Hampton, who they had sent in with that play. And Hampton was either confused or he felt he was held up on the play. If he didn't think he was held up, Tally thought he was held up. Because he went chasing to the official. That stops the clock now with eight seconds. Don't have a lot of options now. Third down and 15. Boy, that holding penalty really hurt him. Again, they have their timeouts remaining, too, but they need to get to at least the 35-yard line to have any gas effort, last gas effort at a field goal. Looks like they're going to try here. They're getting the three receivers set to one side. Yeah, here's the Hail Mary. Three men to the near side. Pally just puts it up in the air. Marshall's down here. So Syracuse. Rod Thompson bats it away. And that's it. It's over. McPherson and Syracuse beats the Dogs of Georgia 19 to 18 in the 22nd Peach Bowl Classic.